Preparing the PCP. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast. I'm the best guy ever, and we've got <coughs> some people here with me. We've got um, <laughs> uh, we've got Monkey Jones. Holy shit! Welcome to the PCP Podcast. I'm your host, Monkey Jones, and I am joined by Digibro. Holy shit. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, to Insufferable Social Media <laughs> Argument, the podcast. <laughs> I am your host, Digibro, and I'm joined by the hypocrite. And that's the end of the podcast, everybody. Thank you for watching this very concise <laughs> podcast. We didn't need to say any words at all. So rude. Don't forget our good friend, the Davu is here. Well, I wanted to do that joke, and I didn't know Hi, who everyone. was going to say my name. Welcome to the shit-eating, munch oh. blood, fuck bitches podcast. Here is everybody. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. So today's topic is a, a technical one uh, that some of us are more familiar with than others, and it's writing concisely. Yeah. Uh, you know, what? I should have beat around the bush for like an hour before I got to saying that. I really <laughs> yeah. fucked up. I I that. But uh, <laughs> that's what it is. That sounded like munchy myself. laughing. <laughs> it did. It did. I like Davu's like in the distant background laughing <laughs> like he's off doing something else, still listening. Uh, <laughs> no, I pulled the fucking mic away from myself because oh, I knew yeah. it would have spiked. Oh, okay. Every, every time you've sense. done that, I always assume it's it's quieter because you throw your head back and laugh as loud as you can upwards. <laughs> and that's why it sounds quieter. got fucking owl DNA, man. Yeah. I imagined he's like pacing in the back of his room whenever he's not talking, trying to think of what to say <laughs> and next. Then, and then he bum rushes at the mic like, oh, it's <laughs> yeah. time to go. Exactly. Um, I think well, there's some really, podcast where I like did that, yes. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure you have. Uh, so, so okay. turn yourself up a little. I can't hear you. It's turn clearly. me up? Okay. No, Hi, I'm closer to the microphone oh, now. Yeah, Is that go. good? Yeah, that's now it's sexy. Good. I'll just keep looking okay, at my waveform. Okay, well, let's, let's stop fucking around here, people. Let's, no, we let's have to be about... as unconcise as possible. <laughs> this isn't even non-concise. This is just off-topic completely. <laughs> totally irrelevant. Well, you that's, can't even make that. Well, that is relevant to this point. Because that's true. I think people, when they think of concise, they don't exactly know what it means. Right, okay. Because when we talk about concise writing, it's about how quickly you can sort of make a point mm. and, like, just clearly communicate your intentions without beating around the bush and stuff and right. like there's a there's a huge difference between going off topic or even being long-winded like you can be long-winded and concise i think i haven't looked at the definition uh, of concise recently i don't know if it has to be short but like for instance i i often get accused of um by that anime snob that that my that hero does, uh Yes, yes, my hero, but that anime snob whose videos are all under 10 minutes long and he gives me lots of shit for my videos being longer. Um, and he often says that, like, you know, brevity is the soul of wit and stuff like wow, that. Wow, he's you so know. smart, dude. He's yeah. so smart. His yeah. videos he's, are he's... just 20 second segments from other people's videos. Like, what does he even yeah. do? Well, that's the thing, is that he, he keeps his stuff so short that he never makes a point. And <laughs> it's not that he's necessarily concise, it's just that he's brief. Hey, you know what? You know? Yeah, the, the, that's interesting, because I just went to UrbanDictionary.com, our home uh. base, uh, to look up the definition of concise, and it is relevant to this. So, the, the full definition is, of definition here is concise. To be brief but inclusive, able to sum up a topic succinct, succinctly, succinctly without elaboration or superfluous detail. And so the point here is you have to be making a real point in order exactly. to be concise, and if that is lacking, then you're just being brief, I guess. Yeah, it's it's how much useful, interesting, worthwhile shit is packed in per minute. Or it's like per the density. Of Conciseness media. measures exactly. the density of your of your topic. And your state, like, speech. whereas that anime snob will often try, to, he'll take a lot of different points and make individual videos about all of them. I'll just put them all in one. Right. You know, it's not that my writing so who's is really not being more concise. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not being. I'm not not being concise. I'm just making a lot of points in a row. You know, and. Uh, that's what he doesn't seem to understand. There can be lots by, of, by the way, there folks, can be lots of works out there that are really verbose and really mm -hmm. long-winded, but don't come off like you're wasting your time as long as you're yeah. interested in all the material out there. You, you know, know? What, you know there what may I would be argue some, is a there may be some was, very popular mm -hmm. uh, harem anime franchise out there that might have a lot of long-winded conversations, or maybe some yeah, multimedia no webcomic that I've been reading that might have a lot of long-winded conversations. 
but if all those conversations are really fucking interesting, then shut up. It's good. It's long. It's just that it's, but it's, it's really hard for people good. to meaningfully fill large amounts of dialogue with actual interesting things to say. And like anime, often uh, I'll see like like any shonen series. I always talk about this. Like a shonen series will start off with a lot of interesting things to say because all the thought goes into the premise of the show or yeah. the of the or the manga or whatever. And then like they just get away from that. Like I don't know the well, thing. I think that's part of what makes like Hunter Hunter special mm, or even mm. Yu Yu Hakusho is that. Every battle is concise in those shows, mm -hmm. where, like, there's just a shitload of battles. Like, yeah. you watch Yu Yu Hakusho um, or Hunter x Hunter, what always struck me about those shows is no fight ever lasts more than one episode. Well, that's not true of early Yu Yu Hakusho, but mm -hmm. um, Hunter yeah. x Hunter and... What's another show I was thinking of that Bo -bo -bo. did the same thing? It, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's... Uh, Artemis there's, just, Foul. there's certain shows where, yeah, like, a fight is always, like at most an episode to an episode and a half and it doesn't give you time to get tired of it it just gets in shows off these cool powers right and like makes the point and goes mm -hmm. you know and like so many people will give uh shonen anime shit just for being so long mm -hmm. but like how is it long is it long like dbz where it really is just wasting a lot of fucking time <laughs> right uh or is it long like you you hack a show where it keeps making new points. Well, dude, there's there's two shows the powers, that I want to bring know? out as great examples of I think is as great concise writing, and one is of course Gurren Lagann because so yeah. much happens every episode of Gurren Lagann. It really moves the pace forward at a wonderful brisk pace. Does not waste your fucking time. And the other one is High School of the Dead, and I really think High School of the Dead. Uh, you know, I made that Mia Maffa episode about it is really great, and I didn't talk about it as much, but that what show is, definitely makes a point in every episode. Every single episode, like uh, uh, there's probably like um, people would often think that because it's a zombie show it's gonna like waste your time and be a bunch of faffing around like oh zombie fights all the time but no like it's real human drama all these characters are developing every single episode you can yeah. see them changing and evolving over time and like the directing is great it's super hype uh, there's intense moments all the time it's got you know the crazy fan service and action happening all the time yeah. it really again that's a show that does not waste a second of your time you feel all like right. you're learning something every time you're watching I, I want to I want to mm -hmm. say something about like Davu was implying that uh, well, no implying Playing, uh, saying mm -hmm. is, is a webcomic, right? It's it's Homestuck he's been reading. Could right. you cons could you say, despite its length, that Homestuck is concise? I would not. You say. could so. probably tell the whole, the whole, all the fucking conversations of Act Five in a much more linear, uh, condensed fashion. It just wouldn't be nearly as funny, and you yeah. wouldn't get to sure, know all the characters. Sure. So nearly yeah, as much. I mean, like, because like, I'm toward I'm, the end of Act Five now, and it's like. It's like, what actually happens in Act 5 gets summarized yeah, by yeah. the self-insert vector in, like, a couple of pages. And it's like, okay, this mm -hmm. is actually pretty well, straightforward plot. It's just told really fucking out of order in a, well, to hilarious the thing, the effect. Thing that, yeah, the thing that I'm thinking of is, like, it's, it's not being brief. You know, it's different from just being brief. It's, it's different from cutting things out. Uh, it, it, you know, like, you could, you could mm -hmm. argue that a lot of the things in Homestuck that seem stupid eventually become relevant. So like how much of like how much is uh, I don't I don't get it. I'm very I, I mean all I'll, you guys I'll are talking that... about conciseness like you know what it means. I don't really understand it, I don't think. Well okay. I I mean it's essentially as I explained, it's just like not it's it's a consistent presentation of new ideas as opposed to reiterating the same idea. Gib, you ever watch like Inuyasha or Ranma one half? No. Nope. Any of that kind of shit? No? no. Okay, well, well you've seen it, Dragon Ball Z, right? Uh, I've read it. I don't know if he has. I uh, reading it's actually way better than watching it. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, well, there's, like, in Dragon Ball Z, for example, the classic thing is that, like, a single fight that maybe took out, like, a couple chapters in the manga, like, gets dragged out for, like, four... The classic thing is the Frieza battles at the end of, uh, like, the first arc of DBZ. Like, it takes, like, so many episodes for just... And barely anything happens in those episodes. It is such a waste of your time to, like, actually sit through yeah, and watch all that Yeah, but that's the thing. Shit. Like, that's why I'm thinking, mm -hmm. like, Homestuck, so much of it is so great and interesting and it's not yeah. it doesn't feel like a waste well, of time Homestuck's not like that homestuck is actually making like, like jokes it, it goes and on funny for so things long are and it goes through uh, things mm -hmm. like uh, you know but in case we weren't clear time. davu was arguing that homestuck was concise if, yeah. if with you good weren't stuff. clear on that okay. it's not concise yeah. with like a mm -hmm. conventional normal like plot that you would understand yeah. as a normal sure. thing it's just concise so, with you know characters being I manic idiots for would... hours Mm -hmm. I would argue that Homestuck does have moments where it does kind of just hammer on the same. Some of those conversations yeah. are like the exact same conversation you read earlier. Yeah. You know, like there right. are moments where it's it does push it a little bit. But I do think the story has so much going on that like 
it deserves to be as long as it is. You Though know, it's appropriate it's... to say that conciseness does not necessarily mean better in all cases, of course. Yeah, True. I would say that Homestuck really adds a lot of flavor by having, like, it is about a bunch of teenage drama stuff happening between kids. Right. It makes sense that wouldn't be concise. These kids waste a lot of everyone's fucking time, mostly right. their own, so... But, yeah, and like I said, it, it's, it's about what it deserves. Like, yeah. with Dragon Ball, like because the manga exists and everything like we know dragon ball z didn't need to be as long as it is we sure. know you could have told they the made same Kai story and proved that without yeah, a doubt exactly yeah. like we know you can do it without taking up that much time so to me that's what concise is it's like tell the story or or write your thing whatever you're doing just do it in the smallest amount of time that you need and that's people don't understand that you do need some humanity in there you need some extra and like uh i talked about this in my video about how i learned how to write gooder um where i uh, in, in like 2010 i became obsessed with simplifying my writing mm. and like i cut it down until it was like just the bare essential language needed to communicate the point but it felt like a fucking robot you know yeah and yeah, I so like, like the, i yeah. So I started going back in and adding in phrases and, like, adding in stuff that just, especially for my videos, stuff that just sounds right to somebody. Like, it engages your brain in a different way. Yeah, like, you need I, to have some time Like, you know who are nice and concise? You know those those videos Davu keeps posting about, like, a robot obviously made this video. Yeah. Like, those are concise. And that's, uh, they don't fuck around. They really tell no, you the top they're, 10 they're, best they waterfalls don't. across the United States. No, hold the fuck on. They're not that yeah. concise. The robots don't know shit about fuck. They're, they'll just be like, <laughs> number 12. Number 12, person who obstinately refused to tear down their house as Chinese highways right. are trying to be right. built. This person really stood up for themselves and didn't stand down to the man. Number 11, this guy really it's goes to show how much society can't progress when some people are stubborn. I'm like, shut up, robot. <laughs> Get your fucking... Po so, you know, like what Digi That's was great. saying, I think there's like four like steps that people go through to like master an art step one is you just learn how to basically do anything you learn how to basically mm -hmm. write yeah. put together a little bit of music put together a little bit of painting it starts out small and then as you get more ambitious and more skilled you make something big and and cumbersome and bloated and then you start learning how to refine your skills and and you just get smaller and smaller until it's this perfect condensed ball that doesn't have much breathing room and then you use your newfound perfection skill to just slowly weave stuff back out. It's like watching like an explosion in like an anime where like it goes and then it sucks back in and then it slowly yeah. whooshes out again. That's like what Daikon art skill form. is. Yeah. Yeah, Daikon, like the like the the whole earth uh, Yeah, the whole the trees go like yeah. That's very concisely put the boo. That's a good <laughs> I'm meant to, to stay a while. While. It's either real or it's hey, a uh, dream. Somebody made me. Oh, it was uh, our good friend, um, a Ukrainian, the artist boy, made a drawing of like someone when you were posting those pictures of. Uh, oh, I was gonna say. By the way, Digi's calling in live from GaiCon 2017 oh, here yeah. in Seattle. Yeah, GaiCon. Cool. And uh, be because it was yeah. called uh, GaiCon, uh, you don't need to change it to GaiCon. GaiCon already sounds like a gay convention. That's, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> is this, guy, is this uh, GaiCon three or GaiCon four? That was the thing. That somebody yeah, posted. This guy posted Gaikon Five, and then drew, Ukrainian drew a picture of me on uh, the fucking skateboard, just being like, "I only meant to stay a while." As I was like wearing the bunny suit and flying yeah. through the sky. Uh, it's, it's great. Thank you, Brilliant. Ukrainian. You're a gift. You're a gift. Uh, anyway, let's get back to. So I don't know. Why don't we talk about like the way that we try to well, be on. concise I, I wanna writers? I want to say one thing. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Like, we're saying that conciseness can be bad. What is the, the worst concise thing? Like, the too concise. Mm. The thing that is way too concise. For, when Ben, when ben tells a story and cuts out all the interesting parts of it and just yeah. tells you the facts. <laughs> I went here, I fucked this dude, I went home. Done. Yeah, yeah ben, <laughs> Fuck ben, this dude. <laughs> the classic ben's virginity story, you know? story was definitely too concise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just that... Sorry, There's an Mark, arc storytelling, you, you, you know? You spoke at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going to say, like, going off of what Nate said, if we're going to talk about how we are concise, or do you want to talk first about art or about analysis? Because I think if there's a fan at home of the PCP, they're probably high school or college age. They have to write a lot of right, right. essays. And what's scary about being concise is in an essay is you usually have, you know, you have to do eight pages. So how can you be mm -hmm, both concise true. and stretch that shit out to eight pages? Just and worry you, about uh, that Do you guys have any advice for that? school is trying to teach you to do is just to, learn, is just to get the basic discipline of typing shit out. It's only when you get yeah. into college that they start telling you to actually how to write yeah. good. 
School, well, that's, school yeah, are, I would the say, mediocre system of this world only wants you to have base level mediocre competence by the time you're 18. And maybe if you work really hard and put all of your future life savings and do this degree, then you can mm -hmm. be decent in your well, late I'll 20s. Well, I'll tell you, Devu, like, while, you know, I, I learned how to be concise because of an English teacher, but I was taking a... Like, that class was to learn how to be a better writer, and most college classes won't t teach you that. They want you to learn how to write a college paper, which means pumping in as much frivolous bullshit as humanly possible to reach 50,000 words. Like, if yep. you look at, like, Cider uh, talking about his thesis, like, like you, you inherently, through working your way up through school, you will learn how to bullshit. You will learn how to stretch things out. I learned how to do that back in high school. And here's my advice. If all they give you is a minimum word count, don't try to be concise ever. If they try yeah. if they give you a minimum word count, write as many fucking like as many ways of saying the exact same shit as you can to reach that word Jesse, count. Jesse, what the fuck are those clicking noises I'm hearing in the background? What are you doing? What is that? Is Jesse here? Yeah, that's I see. I Jesse. am also in this episode, everyone. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but Did, Nate well, revealed. Mute your me. mic so we don't hear you chewing. <laughs> I, it sounds like you're eating Tic Tacs. It sounds like I'm you're just down chewing. with Tic Tacs. I'm, I'm fucking around with shit. <laughs> Jesse's always okay, done that. Great. The whole, Welcome the to the Procrastinators podcast. Jesse on podcast. He's always like flipping a, a screw around into other screws on his desk. We're just doing I remember that shit all the white too. noise. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking um, building infiltration tools. I'm fucking living Persona 5. That's what I do. I stay, I stay at my desk yeah. and I create tools to infiltrate people's palaces. Hey, I think you're the only person I know who's played Persona 5. Is it good? How, how's it going? Uh, it is good. It's pretty... Okay. Now, that's a topic. Now, that's a... Well, this is I, not the Persona 5 Persona cast, 5 everybody. Persona 5 podcast. <laughs> it could be. It could be, except that you're the only He's one who's played it. He's the only one who's played it, yeah. <laughs> my favorite Persona is when, in Ape Escape 3, you can turn into a knight. That's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, what so... was I talking about before we... You, you're I saying don't know. if they give you a minimum word count, you oh, should yeah, be as yeah. frivolous as possible. Yeah, if they give you a minimum word count and no maximum, go ape shit. If they give you a maximum word count, that's where you gotta start worrying about it. Because that's why mm -hmm. I learned to be concise, is I had gotten so used to trying to pump as many words into a paper as possible, and just, like, writing, you know, Dude, unhinged, whatever. at no whatever. point in my life have I ever had a maximum word count. I think yeah. that could yeah. be why I'm such a fucking ridiculously yeah, shitty, this, never cut well, this, my words down This writer. teacher I had, like, he told us to write a story about a... Uh, <laughs> Uh, what was it? It was like write a story about a some a teacher who you learned something from or some some shit. Oh, he's like just that. trying to beat himself off. Well, Everybody write about no, me. This was like brand. Like we just it was the first <laughs> okay, paper we had to okay. write for the class, and uh, it was something like that. I know that's what I wrote about. I don't know if that's what the topic was, but <laughs> mm -hmm. he said like seven hundred to a thousand words, mm -hmm. and I wrote like thirteen hundred. And I turned, and I'm thinking like, ha, I am, I surpassed your word count, buddy. Like, yeah. I'm even better. I, oh, a thousand words, that's nothing to me. And he's like, no, I wanted this to be 700 to a thousand. Like, you went over, you need to go through this and like simplify it. And so Ooh, I took out cool. a bunch of words. I got it down to like just over a thousand and he reads it and he's like, there's still a lot of stuff in here. Like, like he points out some stuff that's like unnecessary. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, now that I think about it, that is unnecessary. And I work it down to like 700 words and it was like a tight little piece and it was much better cool. like i'm reading over it and i'm like wow my original fucking blue because i didn't being, do i didn't never, try to control myself ever, at all yeah. you know ever ever go to school no one <laughs> should ever so, do that so yeah like uh the whole conciseness thing there's not like any like it's not like some sort of magic different way that things can be good or bad it's just a different lens of how to approach removing things that are not good and adding only yeah. things that are good you know i think that that's uh i feel like that's part of what makes cartoons western cartoons better now than they were like in the previous era where a lot of cartoons would just have a lot of episodes that don't matter much but then you Steven see the universe. Universe. but then you see oh no no Fuck no, you. no i'm talking about the... you're doing it backwards all right listen for a couple <laughs> minutes you have to all agree with me for the point to be made so in shows <laughs> okay. now like adventure time it feels like they're really trying to make only awesome stuff happen whereas i honestly feel like when i look at a lot of older shows they're like, well, I guess this episode, something just kind of okay will happen. They're just Talk really about, like, unambitious. Thundercats? Yeah. He-Man, Masters of the Universe just, kind of shit? Know. 
just yeah, just just make only mm. the cool stuff happen. Just try to cheat, you know. Just just make a dessert that's nothing but chocolate and vanilla, you know. But not just every cartoon has like a continuous storyline and, and character progression and shit. Like sometimes you just want to see SpongeBob hang out at the Krabby Patty. Yeah, but do the best ones of that. Hang out at the Krabby yeah, Patty. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just oh, as out. opposed to the Krusty Krab, <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, no, I totally agree with Davu, um on that point because that's what I've always struggled with with like a lot of longer shows is like, for instance, Ranma One Half, uh, as you brought up earlier, as a show that's not at all concise. There's just so much fucking wasted time in that show. It, yeah. It's 160 episodes, and like. The first, like, 20 tell this really, like, compelling uh, romance story. And then the last, like, like, like throughout the show, there's about 60 episodes that are, like, great mm-hmm. out of 160. Which is pretty good, There's I about guess. 96 that, like, you, like, should watch. And there's about 60 that you just shouldn't, you know? And, like, you have it's a chart because they'll this, just right? be... You have an actual post, right? Breaking yeah, down. I made so a... Episodes, oh, you made a... I made a... Yeah, a watching guide for Ranma. Mm. Um, like, it, it's like, you know, here's, like, the minimum you should watch. Here's, like, each different tier of episodes, right. essentially. And the ones that you shouldn't watch, it's because they just boil it down to, like, the... Basically, Flanderize the characters. A, a perfect right. example is the second Ranma and Half movie, which is fucking dog shit. And it, like... All the movie consists of is the most basic idea of what each character is, like just using the most obnoxious running gags. It's like, kind of like the movie effect, because movies are always afraid to like challenge the status quo, so there exactly. will be no developments in a yeah. lot of movies like that. And and just not even doing anything with the characters, because like mm. the best episodes of the show are where you see them change a little course, bit, or course. you see some kind of small insight into who they are, whereas the worst episodes are when they're just being like again flanderized like just like what what is this character known for oh she uh she always she always trips and falls on the main character and calls him a baka inu you know like that's yeah. that's something that has to happen every episode so then you get a movie and it's just that yeah, it's just yeah. and it did it with like every character in the show which there's a huge cast so it's kind of a complete you know. waste of time yeah i mean exactly. hey, help fucking yeah. spongebob does the same thing the first three seasons have like say let's say 20 ideas and it's been like 50 seasons now, and they're still just cycling through the same ideas for some reason. I just realized. Okay, the, but SpongeBob's a little the different. The intro like to this comedy. episode should be the uh, the preparing the Krabby Patty dramatic intro thing, because that's very unconcise. It's like just making you sit around. Yeah, but that's the point. the point. That's like anti humor. I know or it's something. great. That should be the intro. Just saying, guys. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Tell you, that you know, to whoever edits this. <laughs> whoever Ben, I guess. I'll probably edit. Ben. Okay. I, there you go. You and Ben are really. A, fighting over this editing spot. This is good. Challenge Ben. Make Ben into a real boy, please. Make him work for something in his life. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. But I, I do like it. The Well, I think there's a place for shows like SpongeBob that, I mean, they don't challenge their status quo at all. Like, But they're completely focused on being, you know, sort of consumable pop entertainment that just brings you... I don't know. Like, there's you're not learning anything watching a SpongeBob. No, SpongeBob about any focuses of the on the 11 minutes of the episode rather than, like, a season-long story arc. Yeah. So it's not really comparable to, like, Which Steven Universe or Adventure I, Time. I do think it's comparable, right. and I mean, like... You do think it is? I mean, Rambo and Half is the same story. Like, it doesn't it, it doesn't really have an ongoing plot. Well, it's that Rambo mixes in, like, that, that character development stuff, because there is, like, a thing where we, we're waiting for, like, relationship Honestly, development in Honestly, the Ranma. first 16 episodes of Rambo is all the development in the show. Like, after surprised. episode 16, it just cuts off, and, like... Because the, the development that happens, supposedly, is just the same thing over and over again. It's just right. the character's realizing that, oh, maybe we do love each other, but then it goes back to status quo. I mean, I'm not as familiar with with Ranma, but... But Here's a better example. Uh, Futurama. Like, there's certain episodes we all remember of Futurama. Right. Either because they're the really dramatic ones, or they're the ones that are so hilarious and, like, over the top with their concept and really did something unique and interesting. But there's other episodes of Futurama that are just, like, just whatever dick around like do the same thing we've done in a million other yeah. episodes and like no one remembers those ones you i know? think you know those some people are annoyed by those i love almost everything about futurama and i think it's because again it has a more comedic tone and it can get away like you're never going to be super disappointed when there's just a futurama episode that's just right. if it's just hilarious i mean even the baseline great. of the show is pretty good and yeah, like a show yeah. that i think is very close to All Killer No Filler is Rick and Morty. Right, for where, sure. Where, like, you know, we've got two two seasons 
And there's like maybe three episodes that I would be like, eh, I don't know if I want to watch that one if I was marathon. I don't even know if I'd go that high. I don't you think know? there are any. I'd, I'd love them all. I mean, I will rewatch all of them. Uh, right, right. For sure. But like, there's a couple that aren't as good as the other. Like, Raising Gazorp Azorp, not as many people are going to watch that yeah, one again. That's you know? true. Um, but like, so much of it is so strong because they really do approach every episode with like, let's come up with another crazy ass idea. Like, right. let's always have it so it's something you never thought of that's always going to be like a little bit of a mind blow. Even when it like repeats, like, you know, the, the whole marriage between um, Jerry and. Uh, What's the oh, wife's name? Uh, Beth. Beth. Yes. Like Jerry and Beth's marriage has been it's it's kind of beating a dead horse at this point. That's true. But they still find new things to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know. It's so, like even though it's kind of status quo y it, it's still like by the end of the episode you'll be like okay I well, guess you earned that one. Well, you know? How how specifically are you relating this to being concise? Well, just that I think that conciseness is about presenting new ideas. Right. Yeah. Like 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 each. I think it, to repeat the same thing you already said is to not be concise. And, like, you mm -hmm. can draw a parallel between this in, like, an analytical video where it's more immediate and in a long-form TV like show. Like, anyone who where... does a long-ass intro to the video is like, this show came out exactly. in 1994 and it was pretty well, even, good. Even that stuff's not so much a problem. It's when they say, like... Um, when I first watched this show, yeah, I didn't yeah. think it was going to be good. But then after watching it, it turns out it was literally good. Literally filler. Like, just you get can to literally the point. just you have like the sentence, the show. the show is good. Yeah. And yeah. I did this in, um, uh, I showed, uh, there's a video of how I edited the writing for my Kemono Friends video. Because mm -hmm. the original opening sentence was like, um, like, if you just want to know whether or not I think this show is good, the answer to that is that, yes, it is good. Right. And so I cut all that out and wrote, Kimono Friends is good. And that's, <laughs> that's the edited version. And it literally conveys the exact same meaning. Yep. Like, it doesn't add or subtract anything. It's just the same sentence, but with way fewer words. I, and I remember, I, Digi, there was a time when you used to edit out literally every single gap between any words you said. You know, yes. any 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 breaths that you you would cut and them I out and you would delete those them. Back in. <laughs> and yeah, because it it became so dense with information that people. I mean, I'm not it's, sure people had problems it, with it, but I, I did. Uh, it was a big. I did. I still do that. Um, I just did it recently because I just uploaded a a big long ranting rambly podcast about Pirates of the Caribbean Five. Yeah. 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 And um, you know, when you're recording it, it's all coming off the top of your head, and you're going on and on. Right. But. I, I definitely I went through meticulously and shortened the breaths and put the sentences oh, closer yeah, yeah. to each other, like almost imperceptibly, like just like yeah. you know like half a second closer to each other. But when it's an entire podcast and you're doing that between every sentence, you might shave off a good like half an hour of right. redundancy of yeah, just listening yeah. to me like breathing between yeah. sentences. And, and to be clear, I mean, I still cut out all breaths and all everything. It's just that what Hippo's referring to is if you watch my old pony videos, the words literally run into each other. Like mm -hmm. a sentence, there is no space. It will be like, like one word finishes and like, I would edit it that way. I would edit it. So the words literally ran into each other and it's actually headache inducing to listen. It's <laughs> like, like when the videos were like 15 minutes long and it was all like that. And I'd be going between different points with no transition or anything. And so it was like, it was hard to process, even for me. Like, I'd listen to it back and be, like, getting a headache. Yeah. Um, uh, or some, I actually I was... had an effect sometimes where I would feel suffocated Lol. because I don't hear any hmm. space to breathe. And it's, like, it tricks my mind and, like... Yeah. Like, it fucked with me. I would actually feel like like loss of breath listening to some of those episodes back. I kind of get hey, that when I'm listening to music. There's another review show then, that does, that's always done that to spectacular effect, named at zero punctuation, named after the gimmick. Yeah. And, you know, he just uh, writes it around that gimmick. It's like almost, yeah. every, the whole, almost every video is like 10 seconds of a point, 10 seconds of a joke, and it, it's like peanut butter right. and jellies from one to the other constantly. So you you can generally. And I think the fact that those are only five minutes long helps. A yeah. Lot, so you know? can generally get all the point if uh, you just 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 empathize with your audience all the time. That's sort yeah. of a higher level skill in any art medium thing is being able to constantly simulate what it's gonna feel like to the person who this is yeah. for watching. Hey, you know who didn't do that it? in a in a big way? I didn't when I was making my Lucifer video. That right. video was not. It was, that video too, was concise. too concise. Too yeah. concise. There you go. Yeah, for sure. Too dense with information. Too much information that I, when I was editing it in slow motion, I thought, okay, everyone's going to be able to get this, going to be able to read it, no problem. And uh, it was yeah, not that, the case. That's, not that's the, case. the problem I, I've always had with, with edit, uh, like editors that, you know, the extra credits guys still do this occasionally, which really mm -hmm. annoys me because I used to do it and I realized it was terrible. 
is um, to have like a pun image on the screen. Yeah, I hate uh, that shit. Which relates to like a single word in a sentence, and then. You know, the the viewer is then yeah. looking at this image, thinking, "Wait, what's that got to do with it?" Oh, I see. And then they've missed like the the rest of the yeah. sentence and the start of the next one. I've I've done some of that and and not liked it in the long run as well. Extra credits is fucking dog shit. I hate them <laughs> on every level imaginable. Uh, anyway, when it when it when it comes to to making my own things concise, I find it very difficult to imagine like when when the writing is bad. Un- until I've recorded it and I'm listening to it and I'm like, okay, that sentence is stupid. I can cut that out because it doesn't sound yeah. right. It sounds like what I just said. So I can't read it very well. I'm not like a word guy. But when I'm listening to it, that's when I usually cut down all the all the, the, the extra crap. I'm the same way, Gib. I, I do it the same way. Yeah, I think perhaps the most important part of the writing process is to have somebody else read your work and tell you, uh, yeah, you made this point like three paragraphs ago. Do you, you, do, you do that? Oh, I think you've talked about doing that, Monkey. Definitely. All of my videos I do for my main channel, I have one of my friends, like Asperger or somebody, read through it and uh, that kind of thing. It's really helpful. have helpful. friends who are actually it. good, who could actually... I feel like 90% of people listening are going to have friends who have no talent in this kind of thing at all and will never be good at all. And so well, I think anybody can read something. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't think it's necessarily you have to be... A, you know, a linguist or whatever to know that something is not concise. If you just read it and you're like, I don't get this part, this bit's weird and stupid, you know, that's mm-hmm. just what the viewer mm-hmm. will think when they're listening to it. I and guess, Digibro uh, has told me that, in, in private, he told me he loves it when fans send him work that they wrote and he loves to edit it for them and send it back. Oh, so yeah, go ahead and send favorite. that to him. Oh, right. Uh, that, you know, that's interesting because I, uh, I, th- I have a different mentality about it and it's I'm probably not any better, but I have this weird... Uh, fetishistic desire to be independent in everything I do or like mm. have control over everything so I never ask anyone for help well you ever. can always tell Unless them like, that you don't, don't agree have. with what they said like oh yeah I, I see your point but I'm gonna keep but it you know the way what it I is? wrote it it's like an attitude where I don't want to ever have to rely on anyone's feedback ever mm. I want all the skills to be contained within me but whatever I mean that's just well, it's a small thing I, I you feel gotta, kind of I mean, you can learn but... the skills by having some sorry Gib uh, like if you know, if you have a friend who can teach you those things and then you eventually learn it from them, then you will have the skill for yourself. Well, like, I mean, okay, that, that makes sense. But to me, the way to do that is to make the video all the way. And, like, if there's problems with it, okay, I'll fix it the next round. Well, yeah, I, w- I would do that, too. I wouldn't I wouldn't give them, like, one paragraph and be like, is this okay? I would, I'd would i give them sure. the whole thing and be like, well, what what's am I gonna wrong do? with this? Like, yeah. uh, I mean, I, what am I going to do? Like, send you my scripts and be like, Digi, right. is this concise? Tell me. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, would, do I don't want to do that. What's wrong I with would, that? Why are you I proposing it like it's crazy? It's well, a, that's a great I, thing to do. <laughs> I guess because that because then it's not just mine anymore. Then someone else has their footprint One of you guys has done that, right? Like, I know I've checked scripts for some of you. Not me, nigga. Before, but I don't know who. I think I made Hippo check one of mine one time. I know yeah. I've checked Hippo's stuff on his blog before. Incidentally, any of you guys could send me one. I'd be happy to do it if you ever wanted no, my opinion. Fucking it's just I have this. Well, here's here's like... the thing about that. In okay, sp- go for it. Specifically <laughs> is what I was going to talk about is I don't like like the idea of giving anyone an entire script because then all my jokes are spoiled. And especially any of you guys. I don't want you guys to, to see oh, my yeah. script and see what I'm going for. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, not be surprised and laugh at a joke. I mean, you'd you'd still laugh, probably. But it's just, I I, I like keeping cool things a surprise, and I don't really usually like asking for help for that reason. I mean, I I I I get that, but it's it's spoiling it for one person to make it better for thousands. So you just gotta get around that mental block. Guys, that's true. But then again, I really care much more about what you guys think of my content than any of my audience, for sure. Of course. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) no, we are all on a mass scale. Mass scale. Really. Mm hmm. I don't. I don't know that I would trust any of you guys or anyone at all sure. to like proofread like a YouTube video that I'm writing. Like if I'm writing a book or a novel, then yeah, I'm gonna look for an editor or someone who knows about books and novels. Mm-hmm. But if I'm writing an endless Jess YouTube video, nobody gets to fucking touch it but me. I don't think anybody needs to touch yours because yours are perfect. Well, I, I, well you know, to be well, fair, you know, Jesse is, is not, not to, to as my famous as we don't like him to be. Toot, and toot. there are, I'm sure, there are some changes that Jesse could make or any of us could make. Oh no, um, the the, the, the thing I mean, is, I, definitely... I think is what Nate was saying is that mm-hmm. we want it to be our own thing. So if we make a mistake, right, yeah. we want to we want to personally learn from that. I and know, I guess man. asking for help, if if you have like a very specific like question, like. Like, sometimes I come into the chat saying, oh, I can't think of a word that means this, because I just need a word. I need a da-da, word da-da, that da-da, describes da-da, da-da, something no. well. 
and uh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, uh, I think that getting direct advice from people is not the right idea 95% of the time unless you are like just, just, just starting out. Because really the best thing to do is just make it and then sense clues and tells and signs and subtleties from the reaction that people get. Like Digi all the time will explain just... how he tools his videos to, to, to cater to the way that people are reacting, but scarcely does that come yeah. in the form of just doing what people say they want. It comes in the form of analyzing their reaction and coming to new conclusions that they yeah. didn't even well, realize. That mm -hmm. that comes down to a lot of the uh, the classic, what was it, Prego uh, sauce Oh thing? yeah, yeah. The, the pasta sauce thing. It's a, it's a principle in uh, economics about pasta sauce, about how, um, mm. like, Basically, they were trying to find new ways to make pasta sauce, and they like asked people what what should we do, and mm. people gave suggestions, and those didn't sell at all. Instead, they just made stuff up and gave it to an audience, and the audience ended up liking it. Mm -hmm. And it just goes to show how the audience does By not the know way, what they want. Of course, of course, course like not, they yeah. know whether they like it or not, but they don't know what they want it to you're, be. You're slightly yeah. confusing two I, uh, Jimquisition videos. He has one about pasta sauce. About a I don't variety. know if I've seen either. The then he has the uh, other one about he has the other one about coffee. Where in focus group testing, right. if you do a forum, if you give people, if you ask people directly what kind of coffee they want, they overwhelmingly uh, yeah, say they want a rich dark roast because yeah, that makes you right, sound yeah. cool. But then if you actually observe buying habits, people usually like a shitload of ice and milk and cream. Yeah. They like weak ass watered down shit. So like right. when I I mean I will all the time ask people like, hey, what should I make a video about or something like that? But I never do anything that's suggested to me. Like I'll ask, well, I'll mean... ask like all the time. Like I'll go on Twitter and do like polls or like ask people and then not do any of it. And, and instead what I'm really trying to get is more of like, just a sense of what people think I do. Right. You know, like almost See, like, uh, uh... Yeah. Understanding the nuances of what makes art good is sort of what we all specialize in and monkey right. parodies us for thinking we're so good at specializing in because <laughs> yeah like you know I, I've experienced this make a fucking video like hey guys here's this game it's called Undertale and here's five reasons why it's good and then everyone's like that's not why it's good it's good because good characters yeah. and the good music it's got good music I mean, I, that's why it's I know good that people don't know shit about fuck my, what my audience thinks they want from me is like, go take, uh, like, just make another video about the next episode of Evangelion. You know, mm -hmm. like, oh, there's got you. You talked about the first nine. There's got to be just as much to say about episode ten. Or like, take FLCL and break it down. We know there's a lot to say about FLCL because, of course, there is. You know, but like, <laughs> well, is that what is that actually going to be well, what they want when I make it? You know, yeah. is it or am I going to go like? It's definitely like. Judging by, like, uh, YouTube comments, it's it's clear that nobody knows how to scrutinize my work correctly. Uh, they all yeah, do yeah. it wrong. So I definitely, and I think that is not just applying to me. I think that probably applies to most people. I think that you should definitely cultivate the ability to scrutinize your own work before you. Like, you shouldn't have, right. you shouldn't depend on, you know, Jesse, on having other people that is do true. stuff for that you. That is true, but you. you are in the entertainment business. So if people are not appreciating on a high on a large enough scale, at some point mm. the the responsibility does fall to you. Right, but what he's saying is that you don't mm -hmm. listen to what they say is wrong with it. Oh, of course like, not. Right. Like they, they don't know anything about you know, what's like wrong. I mean, like I feel like when I'm going over my own writing and I'm, mm -hmm. you know, editing it and taking out redundancies to to make it into a, a video mode. I mean, I might make mistakes and a few redundancies might get by me even, but I would almost rather have my mistakes left in it than have someone else fix it and have their stamp on it. Yeah, you know, like, whenever I've made, like, a mistake... Kind of in, like, I would, thing, though. I would like rather if, if it I, be... If, if I make, like, a uh, mistake early on and, like, I say a word wrong, I, I'd rather use that as an opportunity to do a silly editing thing to show how fallible I am. Like, something... Uh, yeah. Anything to make it, like, more, like, you know... I would just sure. work with what I have, even if I made a, a boo-boo. Yeah, in the event actually, that someone it's... gives you constructive criticism and it actually works, it actually makes sense on its face then follow it in the event that that happens. You know, whole time I was making videos, Digi was the only one who ever gave me, like, constructive criticism that, like, made sense and was correct. And even then, I, I always told him that he's wrong just for artistic integrity reasons and then just yeah. silently fix the problems later. 
Oh, you've all done that to me, so it's fine. Don't worry. And Nate's, I don't Nate's worry. This said, is how it's supposed N- to be. Nate's never <laughs> said, like, oh, I changed my titles and thumbnails explicitly because you told me to 500 times okay, over to the last fair, six months. To be fair, I've done that one time. <laughs> one, we're talking about a grand total of one time. Uh but I well, it's yeah. But I mean, it's not well, like we Divigi talked about me, it behind okay, your back five hundred times. Give right, me a second Nate? here. It's not like Davinci tells me Nate do da something, Vinci. and I'm like, Vinci? <laughs> Vinci? Oh, oh, no. shit. Yeah. I have leveled up. Oh, oh shit. whoa, whoa! It's not, God damn it. Nate has just admitted that I am the Da Vinci of YouTube. God damn it! I would never admit that. I just want to say code. for everybody at home, hypothetically, if you happen to not be a YouTuber and maybe you're like a kid writing an essay. Don't be afraid to show it to people and get advice. We're not yeah, we're not all true. YouTube writers well, like we are. I, yeah, and I want to bring up like it's uh well it's funny that Wait, no, we're not moving away until I clarify that it's not that Digi tells me something and I do it. <laughs> it's that I have I saw the signs were all pointing. That was me. That yeah, was all me the understanding. The signs that I was explicitly saying to everyone, guys, but, I've done the research. I know the results. I do this. It's not like I'm there looking at your For peer reviewed study here. Months it's just a months. guy telling me what All right. Well, okay. <laughs> I, anyway, I made a realization. Okay, um, right. it's funny to me because Nate and Jesse and mm. Hippo are all very much like suggesting like I want it to be my product and like my it's it's all me and I don't want somebody else to like affect it. Yeah, I feel the total opposite. I will freely allow anybody's mark to be made on my video. I mean, I blatantly copy other people's styles and tell like say so i do videos that other people suggested just recently i did uh why i dropped every anime i dropped because some guy on twitter said it would be a good idea and mm-hmm. i was like hey uh yeah let's do that and but in the biggest way because i have devu edit my videos and i give him literally full rate like free range right. he can do whatever the fuck he wants i don't yeah, give almost any suggestions I, I, the, I think the thing about that is that you know I, well, for me anyway is that a lot of the the, the comedy has to be like coming from me like if i right. think it's funny it it'll be like a thing like either i edit or i say it that way or like you know it's it, a different type of video too you know it's, it's, like, it's, it's, a, it's different, a different it's a different process well, because well sure but like i mean i like div- a lot of what happens in my videos now is just not my ideas or comedy it's just devus and i like it mm. more than what i would have come up with mm. like yeah but d- there's also the, will ch- the case that if i had if i say if uh, if i had an editor he might do yeah. stuff that is worse than what i would have come up with and i would have to teach That's him true. and at that point because like i know i'm very funny when it comes to things like well, editing. I guess did you did you put in the time and you know you know Davu has been fully vetted at this point so yeah. we know I mean if I had forward. if I had a Davu maybe but yeah. I don't have a Davu there's only one I could be your Davu tonight mom and dad will <laughs> never know <laughs> well I mean I just yeah like I, I constantly of get offers of people uh, wanting to sorry did you, you I almost I constantly get offers of people like Hippo said, of, like, mm-hmm. offering to edit my videos for me, or, like, you know, just decrease some of my workload and get more of my stuff out there. Right, right. But, like, if I have to train someone to edit the way that I would edit, then that's, like, would take up just as much time and well, be just as redundant as me re- editing it myself. It's a, it's a business cost, you know? Like, I when I was working on the Galco video with this, this new guy, Snooping Turtle, who is great. He's wonderful. Uh, like, I put out on Twitter, like, hey, I'm looking for a new editor. He was one of the guys who responded. I checked out everybody's work. His I liked the best, so we ended up working together. And, you know, like, we it took time. Like, we went through, and we went through the whole rigmarole of, like, going through, like, every bit, submitting to me for approval. Okay, we'd work on it in the next part. Submit that. Okay, these are some changes need to be worked in. I need to do some editing and then stick it in and send it back. And, but, like, I was willing to do all that. Not because it was super efficient at the time, but because I see a future relationship where we're doing more work together, faster, more efficiently, better. And he's certainly, he was interested in that. And hopefully he still is. Hopefully he hasn't changed his mind. Um, so yeah, it's, it's like an investment, a, a sort of long-term invest- the investment. Thing I'm, sort of the thing I'm much more interested in personally is mm. trying to, to make it so that I can get away with the least editing possible. If you watch my, my Demon mm. Souls review that I made... It's basically, it's, there's nothing. I put a few GIFs on, I put mm-hmm. some video game footage that I recorded on, in a live stream. I liked your skeleton and, boys, they were <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, and, and, and that was it. I just put relevant clips in, and it was great, and people really liked mm-hmm. that. Because, you know, I didn't need to do Man, a that, no, big it's in, in your Demon Demon's Souls Blood video. Bro. What? Just that, that, that mm-hmm. one very simple editing choice, right at the beginning, of just having the skeleton GIFs with the trombones... Along with the music. Those are trumpets, you buffoon. Trumpets, whatever. Tromboners. <laughs> <laughs> it's trombones because they're skeletons, you assy. 
Oh, right. Um, <laughs> now, Jess, to go back to the last point you made, uh, like you don't want somebody else to edit your stuff. I know, I know there was some talk in this chat about having one of us help out edit the Pleeb and the Weeb. Like, what did you decide on mm. that? Do you still think like you are the only one who can do that? Yeah, that's... um. Well, now it's... Well, well, like, in my mind, the Pleeb and the Weeb at this point has morphed into, like, another aspect of the Endless Jess Grand narrative, so now no one can fucking oh touch it. Oh, no. Now it's trapped oh, in my nice. brain. There is, there is one episode that we had talked about having Nate edit for reasons that will become yeah. apparent when the episode but, like, releases. The, um... Yeah, like, everyone... It, it, I started to hear the rumblings, like, five months in. Like, where the fuck are these episodes? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. um... So, the only so, reason like, you didn't hear the rumblings earlier is because people keep asking me instead of you. I guess, <laughs> but then they found out. I guess really I didn't communicate to. well enough that Jesse was editing it, so everyone would just ask me, "Where is the plebe and the weeb?" All I, the time. And for I like really six love months. the clear and artistic I'd say, ask vision. Jesse. The artistic vision conveyed in the <laughs> editing is so like it's all from Jesse's perspective, and he just yeah. doesn't give a fuck. That's what's great. It's about really it. great. It's really yeah. Great. Like that's the that's the reason because it's like how can I explain that idea to yeah, like an yeah. editor and have it make any sense? Yeah. Like it can only be like right. how do I, like how do I sit down with the guy and be like, okay, this this is not a, a this is not an anime talk show. This is a show about me ruining an anime talk show mm -hmm. because I don't want to be there and it's all from my perspective. And when they talk about time slowing down, you're gonna slow time down and go into my brain and look at the French Revolution <laughs> set to the music from Cross Ange, which was an anime that came out two years ago that nobody in the world watched. And also every time that Jeff coughs, I want you to zoom in on him coughing for no reason at all. And then I want there to be an extended ten minute section at the end where every thing that Digi's saying about directing an anime is reflected in like weird like filters on the screen and his head gets fucking <laughs> stupid and weird when he says the word off model and shit like, like it, I can't possibly it's a sit lot. someone yeah, down a lot. But, and explain but, that. I mean, it, would be, it would take longer than editing it myself. But that's a very visionary video and I'm sure you could have like, like smaller shit that you could pass along, you know, like it, it's funny for me because my most, like my big videos, like the main channel, highly edited stuff is the one I want out of my hands and mm. into Vu's. Whereas the stuff that like I couldn't possibly give to him that like I have to put my creative stamp on would be like insomnia analysis because it's so fucking weird like my even i don't fully understand my intentions with it that it has to be me because cool. how could anyone possibly know like I, I mean i'd just be giving you like a bunch of completely meaningless footage and being like do something with this it's yeah. like how do you know which rap song matches best with the emotion that's on my okay, face but, but in this, granted, this clip you know i mean that's entirely true there's definitely projects that are for you and you alone to yeah. do but like i mean the, the the reality still exists of course that there are plenty of projects that you can have other people do right uh like galco and one punch man like that, you like, didn't need right. to edit those those i just wrote the scripts and i thought you know what these are cool and all but i don't really give that much of a shit about yeah. the things that i wrote even though i you know those are all at the time i thought hey these are really cool thoughts i want to tell a story yeah. about him or whatever and but yeah i was happy to pass them off to give somebody else to edit and came out good wow this should yeah, have a I lot mean, to do with the topic conciseness yeah well i mean conciseness it's about the workflow but the know. thing about uh writing concisely is that it's not a topic you could talk about for an hour and well, a half did you, i want to yeah. ask, ask everybody <laughs> totally, like totally do you guys have any specific things that videos do that waste time that isn't hey guys sorry i haven't made a video in a while and also when oh i thought God, the show was going to come out i thought it was going to be this but it turned out to be that any other specific things that you feel waste your time i mean it's just constant I, what i see in like especially analysis videos is constant redundancy and just saying the same thing three different ways and not seeming to realize that you're doing it yeah you know like yeah. hey guys it's rc anime and like oh it's rc anime hi guys and uh guys <laughs> hey it's rc anime just stop it we got the first time well, you know like i remember going into <laughs> making videos because i've always felt that making a point concisely is a thing like even back when i made yeah. videos in like 2008 i'm like i hated when people were like hi everybody hey guys i never i've never started a video with hey guys sometimes i start a video with hello as dramatically as possible when i feel it's necessary so i've always had a i've always been a stickler for not wasting time I've just I, been terrible I used to at feel it, the same right? way about that specific thing i always was like ah if you have to say hello get out you know yeah um <laughs> but uh, you know, over time, people have said, "Well, I mean, it, it, you know, it's it's fine, it's good, and it's good, and it's fine." I'm like, "Oh, I guess yeah. I it's guess it's good and it's fine." Well, and and sometimes I do it. I just <laughs> you know, when I'm recording 
uh, you know, that guitar hole video or a vlog, I sometimes I don't start with the point because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just saying, uh, the fucking... If bleh, I remember bleh. correctly, there's one video of yours where you're like, this game is just good <laughs> yeah. vocabulary. No, no, What's that? My favorite of all time is uh, Hippo's line, um, it's got level design. And like, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah, um, almost like, like any kind of setup at all is sort of uh, counterintuitive to like the the YouTube format as a medium. Yeah. Like um, like in like in skits, for example, like you have a like a wacky character uh, showing up, and you, something happens. You're having a conversation with like a cult Corona, and like um, I like. Looking at it, like, as though it were, like, a movie or a TV show, like, screenwriting tells you that, like, there should, like, this this conversation needs to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, the sentences need to flow together. But in a YouTube video, that just makes it, like, long and take away from the point of the video and just boring and redundant. And what, and what I eventually came to learn is to harness the inherent, like, popcorn-y stupid, stupidity of YouTube. So, like... Colt Corona doesn't need to come in and say, this is why I'm here, and this is what we're going to talk about. I yeah. can just, like, throw him in a as a complete non sequitur for no reason, and just get to the goddamn joke already. I'm just, hey, I'm fucking oh, pooping on. my pants! Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a horse! This is a yeah. pun and then the fucking other guy non sequitur, in. like, as in a centaur? Sequitur, what? <laughs> oh. Innate. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, as I was saying, you know, you can go into videos going, <laughs> I'm going to be concise. Yeah. Lol. I don't know if what I but said made sense. It's not necessarily so, easy. So, when I started making videos, like, trying to do it professionally and all, right? What I'd come into is, wow, I have this, like, interesting point to make. How the fuck do I make it concisely? So, a lot of times I just didn't. It took me, like, three paragraphs, but I could have written it in one paragraph, but I didn't know how to make that paragraph. And, and what I, like, there was one video in particular where I was talking about Gravity Falls and shit, and I was just like, the point I was trying to make, I felt like I needed, to, I needed three paragraphs to make the point because, like, basically the first paragraph has the first 30% of the point. Then the second paragraph has the second 30% of the point, and so on. But in order for those paragraphs to even make sense in the English language, I had to keep repeating the first percentages over and over again, and just weaving I'll... more in each time. It's just it's just hard. It just takes a lot of legwork. You just have yeah. to listen to Mr. B-Tongue videos on repeat every day yeah, for I wanna, months. Yeah, I want to get into why I think it happens. The shit. Um, and I'll, I'll also say, of, of what Jesse was saying about Cold Corona, like, if you want to... Everyone should emulate... Uh, the existence of Cal Chuchesta yeah. as a side character in videos. Yeah. Because you can watch any Needle Drop video and he never explains what the fuck Cal Chuchesta is. Mm -hmm. He just shows up and says some weird shit in, in like 30% of his videos. And you just kind of have to either know the lore of the channel or like you're just going to go, okay, well, I don't know what that was about, but it was funny. You know, like... <laughs> Because who cares what it actually is? Haps you know? and what? Who, who the fuck cares? But, um... The reason I think it happens where people repeat themselves so much is that they feel like this point needs more weight than the amount of words they can use for it. And this mm. happens to me a lot. Um, and the biggest place I see this happening in anime analysis in particular is when trying to describe visuals. People will always say, like, the visuals of this show are really incredible, but they don't know how to explain that in more depth. So they say, like, the animation's really great, the color design's really great, yeah. the uh, the way that things flow together is really great, and they're basically just emphasizing again and again the point they made already. The visuals mm -hmm. are really great. And it's because, like, unless you can pick apart, like, one moment to really dig into that, then it's hard to to, to describe that in broad terms. But they're, it's like you've got something in your brain that's like, no, I have to make sure they understand. They yeah, have to yeah. know how great the visuals are. This can't just be a flippant one-off point in the video, but you end up just repeating yourself ad nauseum. And an example, and like not to throw shade at this guy because I love him, but Super Eyepatch Wolf just mm. had a video about the, the newest season of Samurai Jack. And he kind of does that with the visuals where he talks about it for like three minutes <laughs> basically just emphasizing again and again how good the show looks. And, like, the on-screen footage yeah, is doing he, all the legwork as it is. He didn't need to say anything. Maybe that's really the point, you know? that he's just trying to fill time so he can and show you it slides. It could very well be, yeah. but, like... And, now, and, and that, is, it that could be effective, but just make an AMV. Put an AMV in the middle of your the, video. That'll yeah. do enough, you know? 
emphasizing one point over another doesn't can't just be made through the amount of words used. It can be done through the tone of the words used. Like, yeah, you know, true. the character designs are fine, you know, the locations are fine, but that motherfucking yeah. nose on the main character so goddamn cute! <laughs> Moving on, right? Yeah. That kind of thing, People right? People forget like, um, that swears exist for emphasis, so right, that's exactly. why I like to yeah, use yeah, yeah. them to make things look God, like cool. Yeah, uh, I was actually just thinking about that from Homestuck. After pages and pages probably mm -hmm. novels worth of chat logs there's one moment where the way that you read the chat log is slightly different to really emphasize an important sentence and like mm -hmm. obviously super eye patch wolf does this because for him the most important thing is to say the title of the video he's like yeah. why as dramatically as possible you should watch <laughs> you you <Hakusho>. watch <laughs> show <laughs> onto the video that, that shit cracks me up every time uh, but like um I think the best way to do it in a, is is to, uh, like, what I do with my composer videos, where, like, I know I can't say seven minutes worth of shit about an anime composer, so instead I'm just going to play the fucking music and pop in every once in a while and say that something. That was good. And, yeah. um, like, Canapa has almost done something similar with animators, except he talks almost too much, because mm. he will just keep repeating, like, and the animation here is drop-dead gorgeous, and then he'll, like, play a clip, and then he'll say, and then over here, the animation is so incredible, and, like, play it, I'm like, I get it, dude, just, just make it, just make a Sakuga mad, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I'll just have, like, an intro to it, uh, or something, um, which I did that, too, with my videos that I always forget exist, because they weren't on YouTube, um, where I just, like, showed off, like, the early work of a bunch of, like, or it was directors who had previously been animators, and I had this video uh -huh. where it was basically an AMV where every once in a while I'd cut in and say, here's this guy, and here's the stuff he did, and then it's just an another short AMV, you know, because, like, yeah, sometimes you don't have enough words to really describe it, so, like, don't try to force the format on it. So don't try to force it this? to be an analysis this video. This particular brand of conciseness you're talking about does not actually save you any time. It's just saving you number of words wasted on the page. Yeah. Well, because it just sounds like shit when someone just keeps repeating themselves about, over and yeah, over again. Yeah. You're like, I fucking get it, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. Just, I, I feel like it's more effective if you just show it. And, and the audience will feel it emotionally, you know? Like... It, with the Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer video, where yeah. you at no point, or better example, the Gurren Lagan Part One, mm -hmm. like the bulk of that video is just an AMV with images showing your emotional reactions. Imagine how fucking garbage that video would be if instead of all those reactions, it was yeah. you describing your reactions <laughs> to each moment. And then that That's moment true. was so sad. Like, but then this yeah, you, moment you was so uplifting. None you know? of the words. It would it would be terrible. It would be awful yeah. to just. just and, oh my god. And then it got like twice as cool and then it was like four times as cool all right. of a sudden shit and i mean that's all those visuals are really saying yeah that's right but it makes you feel it the same way like mm -hmm. you you're just you're going from a face that looks shocked to a face that looks utterly shocked and then a physical you know? transformation of my body exactly. into a real man and it's like we <laughs> we feel what you felt we yeah. don't even have to see the show to understand what you were feeling mm -hmm. and like it means it just hits you way harder to see it than it would be to hear it and like that's perfect conciseness. You basically summarized and reacted to an entire fucking show in four minutes, uh, presenting the full range of emotions you felt. Mm -hmm. That video is mm -hmm. a fucking masterpiece. It's, it's kind a, of a masterpiece. A absolutely a <laughs> fucking masterpiece. You know what I'm kind of tired of is blowing smoke in... up Nate's ass about his girl in the gun part. <laughs> I'm not. Well, Sorry. Yeah. Well. Well, what I'm uh, kind of annoyed with is people being. You know, they got all their concise talking, but now, with uh, with more, you know, Super Eye Patch Wolf, Nerd Writer, sort of, breathy, talky, sort of, oh, it's mm -hmm. so fucking, so cool, guys. They they give it a little bit You should a do a video like that, because just those two seconds of imitation were hilarious to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Make a parody Consi video, Gib. <laughs> consider it done. Yes. But th there's never really enough breathing room for me to feel like any of it means anything. Oh like, yeah, I agree. Because mm -hmm. I'm I'm editing a, a Bloodborne video, and I've I've got this whole big filmed live action bit at the beginning, and I didn't expect it to be like really long, but it, at the moment it's like literally the size of my actual analysis that comes afterwards, mm -hmm. and it's so good just list, just watching it and seeing how slow it is. It sets the tone of the game, and mm -hmm. then also the review because I you know I'm silly, and it's like it's. <laughs> it's it, it it has, I really like it. I, I I'm just watching it. I'm like, 
why don't why don't ana- analytical you videos don't do, have you're... more than just a small pause and then a swell of music before I, going into a big th- old those boring things, thing? Those guys are a little bit too one note. Like yeah. they really they stick in one emotional Nerd. range when they don't understand. I mean, if they're trying to make a grand point, I really think like my girl log in part two does that correctly. It's it's about building to a point, and you can be silly, and you want to catch people off guard and make them laugh and surprise them. Yeah. And then at the end, when you're making your grand point, it's at that point that you've earned the climax. That's when you hit them with like, I, the big music and I shit. literally can't watch Nerdwriter anymore because I yeah. feel like every video he makes is trying to make the exact same point. Mm-hmm. This thing is impressive. Yeah. Or, or Captain Christian as well. Mm-hmm. Like, it's always, it's always just building up to, like, Wow, they sure did think about that. They sure did work. They they sure did their jobs and made something good. You know, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. but um, someone who I think does that kind of dramatic presentation well is uh um Vadi Vidya, where like it actually sucks you into the world he's describing. You know, like he mm-hmm. because it is like like Hippo said with Nerdwriter, he's not slow enough. He's being slow to sound dramatic. Right. But then it just creates this kind of white noise feeling because not everything he's saying is dramatic. Vadi Sometimes does feel... he's just describing what's good about this movie, and it's like mm-hmm. this doesn't need this dramatic emotional weight. Well, right. It turns and the into thing white about noise. Vadi goes like Vadi full storyteller. Is that all the stuff you know? he's talking about is just the Souls games, which never get tiresome yeah. of hearing about how great they are. Yeah, well, and they well, have a consistent tone, so he can apply right, the right. same thing to every one, and it, it makes sense, because you're yeah. always listening to you the know Souls music. what's about Nerdwriter these days feel, is his editing, you know? mm-hmm. because he's always making all the edits slick, and I'm sure it's just because yeah. I make videos, but it always distracts me. Like, I was trying everything, to watch his... I everything about Nerdwriter distracts me now, like, because all I see is the artifice. Like, I can't, mm-hmm. I can't yeah. even understand what he's talking about anymore, because all I see is the artifice of the shit that he's been doing for two fucking years and has changed none of, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, mm-hmm. but, but, like, he always tries to, like, adjust the settings ever so slightly. You never see quite yeah. the same thing, right? You can just look at his thumbnails... But it's the same feel. And he has, like, 20 different fonts, right? He, he really puts a lot of effort yeah. into typography, and it's really distracting. But the typography I is like really distracting. It is, it is as great. As I... It's great on its own, but it's great in a way that takes away from it, you know? just like I remember the day that I found the font that I use all the time now. That was a good day. Never had to think about what font to use oh, ever again. Was that the again. TBAP one? <laughs> no, Showcard Gothic. That was the TBAP one, but now I use Microsoft Ty Lee. Microsoft Ty Lee. I'm all Blue Highway, baby. I know you are. And I, I don't even, I don't even think it looks good. Font. I just it looks nice. It's no, fine. I'm getting. I pretty, hate fonts. I all right. Here's a, here's <laughs> I, I'm getting pretty sick of Blue Highway at this point. But that's how I should feel. I don't want to change the font. And it's like, just, yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, hippo. Uh, just to just to finish the Blue Highway point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I also like. I mean. I, again, I don't even think it necessarily looks good. It's just that no one else uses it. Mm. So, like, it's so definitively mine that, like... And I don't know a better one, you know? So it's yeah. like, eh, fuck it, let's just stick with this. Might as well. Gabe, okay, what were you saying, though? I was well, I was just saying I hate fonts, and every time I have to choose a font, <laughs> it's the fucking worst thing, because I can yeah, never remember yeah. what fonts I've used before. I never right. keep a record of it, because I can't be bothered to type it down and then save a file somewhere. Mm. And then, uh, you know, I'm going... Just one and I'm, use it forever. I'm, I, just, re- no, but I can't an remember project. them. I can never remember well, them. Yet, the one I have been used. I I would recommend just... doing what Munchie did, which is genius. Which he has a font called My Script, where it's just you turn your handwriting into a font. Nice. And uh, mm. we used that for the S4 Diaries, like all of the like title cards and everything, because Munchie had designed um, the backgrounds for that. And so if you watch like the ending of those videos, it's a great looking font that he had of just his handwriting, and like it was really oh, consistent. Oh, my handwriting is so Munchie's, awful. I remember, uh, Munchie's I remember... out there making fonts at age like 14. Yeah. I remember while his other children are just <laughs> finger banging in the backseat of mom's minivan. Just get serious, kids. Get on Munchie's level. I remember CGP Grey talking about how he like has specific fonts for specific purposes. Like there's one font that always is used if the words represent his own statement from his own mind. Then he has another font that oh, represents yeah. the hmm. collective opinion, and another font that represents, like, straw man or something. I don't remember. It's an early episode of Hello Internet where he breaks down, like, the different fonts that have different voices. And I thought, yeah, That's cool. fonts. The thing, the thing about that is that when I'm, when I'm trying to type it, like, I need some text, and I just go, okay, let's get a font. I've never really prepared to think for any sort of a length of time about what font will be appropriate. So I feel like if I don't sit down and think about all these different fonts and which ones work for different th- things, 
I'm just gonna pick a random one every time because I can't be bothered to think about it because I just need the words on the screen. Yeah. Okay, what you should do is you should decide one you like, you should use it in a video, and then what you should do is next time you're making a video, open up that old Vegas project, be like, ah yes, this is the file, or this is the font I use, and then use that, and eventually you will just remember forever. There are font yeah. finder well, software. I did that, I did that like, for, like a website for my... Where... For my... Let, no, let, let Gib finish his point. Yeah, what were you saying? Yeah. Well, I did that for my, my pony reviews, but I mm. got bored of it, and now I can't... I don't want to use it anymore, so now I just have a font that I will never use. As opposed okay. to a bunch of fonts that I will just randomly use at any time. <laughs> hey, Nate, let me finish cool. this point. I, I intend to. I am <laughs> suffering with three-second lag here, brother, b -b boy, well, person, okay, but affiliate. Yeah, talking, <laughs> there was talking over each other going on, so somebody had to go first. Okay, but in any case, uh, I feel like we're done. I feel like we've hit the wall here. We're just kind of rambling. Why don't we go to questions? What, what do you think? We, we, I'm we get, okay with do that. that. Monkey, did you uh, want to talk wait, about wait. concise um, writing in fiction at all since you're here and haven't said shit? Yeah. In, in fiction or non-fiction? <laughs> Jesse wants to say something too. Whichever. And yeah, well, Jesse, what were you going to say? Jesse? Jesse! Um, <laughs> I don't remember. God damn it. <laughs> I felt like I had a lot to say about this topic, but then I got scared and became confused. Okay, well, the uh, monkey can go on and then uh, maybe you'll remember. Yeah, let monkey well, go first. I mean, okay. just to, I've already kind of said it in terms of concise writing, mm -hmm. you, you can never trust yourself because you know what point you want to make, but that point not might not be clear to somebody else who is experiencing yeah. the writing for the first time. So I would say mm -hmm. always find a trusted friend or parent or teacher to just look over that shit and tell you if you sound like a retard or not. But Mumpkey, I don't have any friends. <laughs> and also maybe more than one because I've started yeah. to have some concern that um, – because I pass all my scripts to DeVu, and I just kind of count on, like, well, if DeVu gets it, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But DeVu also will listen to my video over and over again, and is definitely going to understand it by the time it goes out. And then sometimes I think maybe both of us understand it better than the audience is going to. Yeah. Hey, so, fair enough. Uh, to be fair, I don't do that as much. I mostly listen to it, like, once, and then I just sit right. on it for days, and then maybe I listen to it one more time. And then I go into editing it. The last couple of videos I've done like that, so hopefully yeah. not. I don't know. I just, I, I do, I worry sometimes that me and you are so steeped in my analytical voice that we will autumn, like, of course we get the point that I'm making. Sure. Um, and then, but I have some videos that I'll return to like six months later once I've forgotten what the point was of that video. And I watch it and there's certain parts where I'm like, I don't know if I was clear enough here. You know, like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know if mm -hmm. I really... Like, if the audience will really appreciate what I'm saying, unless they watch the video twice, you know? Because um, sometimes I'm too concise. And I guess we need a PCP editorial department. Yeah. To review well, people. the funny thing is that I I think I am amazing at editing anyone else's stuff. Uh -huh. Like, uh -huh. if, So it if, would be you then. <laughs> yeah, it would just be me. Uh, but then somebody would have to do mine for right. me, you know? And it would just have to be tell me if it makes sense or not, and if not, I'll go fix it. I remember you know? one time like, there was this website, this really ancient web 1.5 website that was like, <clears throat> dude, pay us to give you the service of us editing your uh, writing, your prose. And it goes on and on about how you really can't notice the flaws in your own works. And it was just talking about how much you really need to hire editors and we're here to serve you. And the HTML was so fucked up that you couldn't even see half the text. It was like <laughs> not, it was uncentered <laughs> and all the buttons were too big and you couldn't, oh, no. it was like an absolute mess of a website. They, and they, I, they specced into editing too hard and didn't put yeah. it into web design. They fucked and up And I was just steps. like, ha, irony. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and it's funny, too, because because um, I used to always show my videos to Victor, and I'd ask him, like, did you get all that? Like, did you understand it? And, like, half the time, he's like, yeah, of course, because, like, Victor does think analytically, too. Like, a lot of the time, stuff that I say, he thinks is obvious, mm -hmm. and he's like, you mean to tell me that people wouldn't know this already? And I'm like, no, most people are retarded and don't think about anything. <laughs> <laughs> but then yeah. there's also stuff where I will present it to somebody, and I'll say, like, did you get that? And they'll say, yeah. And then I'll be like, well, what what was the point I was making? And they're like, uh, I don't know. Like, I know I understood it. I just don't know what the hell it was about. And I'm like, yeah, uh, that's it sounds like... That's not how like... understanding works. Well, that's kind of how yeah. some people just consume stuff, though. They don't really yeah. worry about well, it. Well, I think I mean... there's a lot of people who, like, just, like, kind of watch the video and, like, they can tell that what I'm saying makes sense. Yeah. They just don't fully process it. And, like, they just go, yeah, that was smart. 
Like, I can tell that yeah. was smart. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you said, though. You know, like... Mm. Well, that, that's the thing. Some people aren't analytically minded in that way. And even if they did understand it, like, properly, they may not be able to communicate it because they're not good at that. Yeah, like, they and wouldn't that's, be able that's to tell, true. tell you right, back right. at you in a different I think that's true of Victor. Of like, I think Victor understands all my videos and just can't explain it back to me. But I have yeah. had people who I know don't get it. And, uh, and like, because I can see it in their eyes. They have that deer in the headlights retard you look, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's you know. kind of like. Uh, me and me and Jesse were discussing uh, rap lyricists recently, and how um, we both think MF Doom is overrated mm. because everyone always talks about how amazing Doom is for his like crazy rhyme schemes and stuff. But most of his lyrics are literal fucking nonsense, <laughs> and I think it's just that people are so impressed by like the fact that he's making all these rhymes and like and stuff that they don't like it just goes over their head and they think well i just don't understand it because it's yeah. too smart that's a real thing. a lot of uh -huh. a lot of rappers i notice really tend to bog themselves down in the show offy like internal rhyming right um mm -hmm. to a ridiculous point and it is you know it is impressive but a lot of them are also not saying anything yeah like it's like rap guy like there's been a yes. lot, like, yeah, like, some of the best rappers ever, you know, weren't rhyming every single word. They were just saying yeah. statements that rhymed. Yeah, like, Shake well, Up, first I'm, rapper. Guys, no if you don't, see the, if you don't see the vision, if you don't see the vision in, over your head I'm floating, I got your girl deep throat. <laughs> you're just, you're just not, you're not up to snuff. Wait, which one is that? that? That's in Rap God somewhere, I think. Yeah. I could be, I could rap, be wrong. Rap God is, like, I mean, in fairness, Rap God is, like, about... The yeah. idea that he doesn't have to make a point. He's just flexing nuts. Mm. But that's why it's an obnoxious fucking piece of shit song. I fucking love that song. <laughs> hey, going back to the topic of Who can doubt the wisdom? I, the I wisdom pretty... in, what is a juggalo? I don't know. <laughs> but you ask what it is, well, fuck if I know. <laughs> <laughs> going back to the topic of, like, showing shit to our family, you know, like, I have some pretty decent resources for that. Because I, could, I have my dad, right? And my dad is someone who is... Uh, intellectual and is an analytical and open-minded, but is like a baby boomer who has literally no interest or point of reference for anything I care about and always forgets everything that I tell him after I'm done explaining it. So basically I'm able to use him as like a, a, a mechanism to like, if I can explain something in a way that he gets and is mildly interested by, then I know I'm yeah. doing it correctly. Like one time I explained Sonic OCs to him. Right? So first I had to explain mm. Sonic, and then the adventure era, and then the concept of fandom, and then OCs. And he was like, oh, okay. And I can tell in his face when he's getting something or not. So yeah, yeah. you can use your family. You can bother them and waste their time and waste their life. Uh, to help my, my dad's good for that as well, except yeah. that he has such a short attention span that somewhere in the middle, he'll like notice something out of the corner of his eye, and it'll completely make him wipe all memory of the conversation he's having. He's a squirrel, mm -hmm. like a human squirrel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my brother as well. My, my brother is, I guess I'm going down the list here just so that you guys can compare it to your own families and think about what resources you have in them, because like my brother is someone who can appreciate all the things that I appreciate in art, but has an unbelievably short fuse for giving for no longer giving a shit. So it's like, yeah. if anything isn't perfect, then he's gonna be like, okay, I'm done with this. So it's like, yeah. he's a pretty good useful, t I was like explaining to my brother a lot of my ideas for, for a video game, and like he was on, he was nodding his head at all of them. Unfucking precedented with me telling him my ideas. So that really was a good sign for me. Yeah. What? Are we still going to questions? Um, I still... Okay. I have okay. two <laughs> points. Two pieces of advice, keeping it in the realm of, like, you writing concisely for YouTube, because mm -hmm. that's what I know. That's our area of expertise. Um, I, I have two pieces of advice that I've, that I've thought of during this for writing concisely, as I mm -hmm. explain that I have these two pieces of advice as inconcisely <laughs> as possible <laughs> by repeating myself 50 times. Um, the first piece of advice is never write an intro. Don't do it. Intros are always bad. They're always Agreed. a waste of time. Right. Just if it if you want to do like a like a skit or like a, a funny aside, put it in the middle of the video because no one's going to sit through an intro to get to your point. But if right. you just start throw them right in there, 
to the point, then they'll sit through that and get to whatever else, other bullshit But also you tell them to, to not watch the video, which is what you do half the time. Just like, this video isn't good, <laughs> and, don't watch it. Well, yeah. That's the intro. Well, yeah, because, yeah. Because well, I care about, I I care about on, my audience. I warn them when a video yeah. is garbage. To, to piggyback on that a little bit, I'll say, I think, um, I think a lot of why intros get written is that people don't know how to start their paper or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, they're just looking for a way to, like, get the juices rolling. So I'll say, write an intro and then delete it. Like, yeah, okay. once you've got the ball rolling and you figured out what you're saying, just go back and delete the intro. You I, don't I, need I it think anymore. it comes from that, you know, high school, college, you have to have Absolutely. this many mm -hmm. words. You have to have a thesis that is three seconds long. Your thesis doesn't have to be so many sentences long. It can be yeah. one word, you one sentence. This thing is cool. The end. Then get yeah. to the fucking point. I mean, if or you just saw like, my you know, last like, video... My last video had the thesis in the title, and I don't even say it in the like the title of the video is yeah like how much does uh, visuals matter in anime, and then the first sentence a of the lot. video is obviously it's a matter of opinion, right. you know. So like just didn't yeah, even say never it again. write intros. Don't waste anyone's time. It's just jump into it. You you have the compulsion to think that you'll lose people by jumping into it, but you won't. The opposite is true, and this is yeah. um, mm -hmm. this is something that I've learned by sucking at it for very long and very slowly coming to terms with how to write for YouTube particularly. And the other piece of advice that, that I've learned mainly by sucking at it myself for many years before I slowly got the hang of it, um, is not every video has to be Mr. Plinkett. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, there's the compulsion, especially for like people who write analysis type videos of this video about this thing has to say everything about this thing. I'm going to yep. encompass the entire scope of it. Sometimes it works out well. You know, Nate's Gurren Lagann is a great video, but even that's in two parts. Mm -hmm. um, yep. yep. Yeah, I used to do that all the time, and it would really hamstring you know, me because I'd say this, yeah. You know what? You know what? Monkey? YouTube review show suffers or from review. trying to make every episode Mr. Plinkett. All the same to me. <laughs> What's that to move? Mr. Plinkett. That's true. The, the Mr. The Plinkett one? show itself has all these episodes that are trying to be Mr. Plinkett and don't need to be, and I'm just like... What's the like, Mr. You know, Plinkett show? What are you talking about? I think he means, like, like Baby's Day Out didn't have to be a 45-minute video. No, was that a was a 23-minute video, and it that was, was a prank funny. because they all thought he was going to do episode 3 of Star Wars, but then he did a kid's well, movie. Sure. Yeah, that like was, a the, that was fine. That's a joke. But, like, you know, like, say the, um... The Indiana Jones one, that was just like, the only point I can actively remember is they don't have any violence. That, That's, that was the, weak. The Indiana you know, Jones like, video okay. is very meandering and all over the place. In right, because I feel like though, he was trying to force was an hour my... of content out of it, and it was just like, well, that was nope. them exploring, like, what they can do in the future. Like, what sort of content will work. Like, are we really just going to have to do Plinkett forever? I, I, like, that was early days. I think they were still figuring well, that I, out. I, I mean, well, it's... My, my point is that you can mm -hmm. really hamstring yourself by yeah, trying yeah. to put everything into yeah. a single video, and you won't get as much content out as fast as possible. You won't improve. Mia Mafava is proof of that. Yeah, and yeah, I'm, yeah. you know, like, for example, I'm looking right now at, at like an old like a gunbuster my Japanese anime is that I wrote two years ago and I it's like that, 25 pages that. long <laughs> yeah I never got around to actually making it because I'm looking at these 25 pages of words and I'm like mm -hmm. I don't want to edit all of this but now I'm right, looking yeah. at it years later and just thinking well wait a minute I can clearly split this up into like four different videos if I yeah. want yeah. and that would be like way easier yeah. and actually get made that way so just, just don't not everything I has to be I still haven't solved this problem. Right this problem with, like, the extra credits problem where we've explained all the shit. I don't need analysis to exist anymore. I know it all now. But right. the whole point of continuing to make pieces in an artistic medium for the incoming generations is you have to keep making the point to people. So I, I feel like we just yeah. need kids' analysis. We need, like, specifically PBS nerd writer that is just, like, telling you all the basic <laughs> shit where, like, some sort of cartoon dog talks about ludonarrative dissonance and you <laughs> have a fucking, to figure a that fucking shit moose though. comes in and talks about Zomkin's uh, work, right? Uh, look, and that look, way, look, like, all the adults can just focus <laughs> on higher-minded shit. <laughs> fucking <moves>. Interesting. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad Jesse brought all that up because me and Nate were literally talking about this last yeah, night. Um, I think during our, the interview. That, yeah. By what, the way, is that the, live the, already right now? This will be out. The Nate interview is yeah. going to be out. So I, I interviewed Nate and we were talking about how there was kind of this perception that we all had back in 2015 where like, we all looked up to 
45 minute long hyper detailed analysis like you know uh, like mr b tongue on mass effect or mm-hmm. uh mr plinkett or sequelitis and like we all had this idea that, like that's the ultimate video that's what we should all be trying to do that's what matters the most and nate did girl in the gone part two and jesse did the drowning in horseshoes videos leading up to horseshoe finale and i did the sao videos the the asterisk war which i mean asterisk war at least was split into parts mm. in like a big way you know um but like we all had this idea of like it has to be the biggest possible thing and the, what that it yeah what eventually happens is you never make it and then you end up with like more than one of those like it's one thing if you have one you know you have to do right like girl the gone i had it to had, to it. It happen, had to be done you know mm-hmm. and like <laughs> there's there's a couple that i think probably i still have to do you know but like one of the biggest hurdles i ever got over as a creator was deciding not to write a book about ava and just to make videos about whatever ideas I had about Ava. Yeah. And and now I have, like, eight hyper-successful Evangelion videos, right. and I still could make, like, 20 more uh, as the ideas come to me, but uh, th- those would not be out. Like, if I was still in the mindset that I have to make one giant Ava video, there would still be no Ava video, yeah. and it's questionable That's if there ever stuff would becomes. Be. That's how stuff becomes too much of a burden. That's mm-hmm. how you get mm-hmm. buried under your own ideas. That's how a boy gets trapped in the furnace room. You don't want that. <laughs> you don't want that. You do not want that. There's a spooky bat in there. Let me Watch have... out. That spooky bat oh video actually That's... freaked me out. <laughs> oh, man. That, 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 that bat is so scary. You don't even know, guys. Every day with that bat. I, I watched that, I watched that video. Constant struggle. I watched that video while I was alone in a hotel room. Oh, shit. And, like, the, the, the music kind of got into my head, and I went outside to have a smoke, and I was just kind of like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> guys, we should make this, this kid's analysis show. The, the subtext submarine... The Vinny the Venetian subtext talks about aesthetic cohesion. Yes! Guys, yes! The subtext go to submarine. fucking go to patreon.com slash the procrastinators, whatever the fuck the URL is. If we get ten thousand dollars, we will get Hippo to animate uh a, yeah. an animated series talking about analysis. <laughs> yes. That way yeah. everyone from right out the fucking womb It'll will know just be all the basics. animal characters yeah, yeah, explaining yeah. at analytical points. That uh, sounds great. Digi, real quick, just for clarification for audience members who may be feeble-minded such as myself. <laughs> all the points you just made, how does that comparable to at the beginning of this when you said you put all your points in one video, whereas Anime Snob separates them into separate videos? Like, th- is that oh. kind of the same mm. idea? Well, what? What, I, what I mean to say is, like... I, it's not that I put every idea into one video. It's that my videos tend to go through various points. Like, my videos go through stages. It's always, like, however many points I think belong in this video. You know? Like, um, I recently did this video series about Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. And it was planned to be three videos. And it's just because I had a shitload of points. And I said, well, let's break... Like, I don't want to make a 45-minute video because right. it's not cost-effective mm-hmm. to do that. <laughs> so let's split it into 15-minute parts. And I had just enough notes about the main character to make one 17-minute video about her. Then I had enough notes about the other characters to make one 13-minute video about them. And then I had enough notes about the art and animation that I can make a third video whenever I feel like it. You know? So, like... Y- like those videos are fairly long individually but it's because they're going through all of the points that I thought needed to be in one video like everything about Kobayashi so it's kind of like five that anime snob videos well, in one I mean, video the, the real you know? problem at the end of the day with anime snob is that the entire video is a waste of time because yeah. he's just wrong he is just <laughs> yeah, wrong that's, I mean that's the worst part <laughs> yeah. like, don't, don't I... take this as me in, in any way endorsing the way he does things like his style of video could make sense it's just that he He's literally retarded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. A good anime snob Episode 17. <laughs> a Pomeranian talks about postmodernism. Uh, I'll work on my puns. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I have a mm-hmm. tip for, for conciseness. Mm-hmm. Um, stop writing clever YouTube titles. I don't like it when... They, they, you just stop it. You, this is a personal hate, thing for Gabe. He's it. on a, he's I, on the warpath. What path. does that have to do with conciseness? <laughs> because if you just write the name of the thing plus analysis or review, I would, I'm way more likely to click on it if I don't know what it is. If you're trying to convince me to click on a video about the ten secret hidden things and subtext that nobody has noticed about this other thing or anime. I, I don't know the referring? anime to begin Honestly, with. Honestly, Hippo, at this point, so, I would prefer numbers and exclamation marks, because I've, at this point, gotten completely sick of the nerd writer style of, like, the eloquent sentence that sounds all dramatic and highfalutin, you know, like, how yeah, this like, thing I, captures I'd rather your just, shit, you know, like, ugh. It seems I'd, to work, I'd rather, though. 
Yeah, it well, seems I don't to like work, it. but it works. It works on the sort of people who think they know everything and would like to know the secret, special, extra but, things that super intelligent but, people. But that's I just want to know stuff. I just want to know just, about okay, it's just that a thing. We will. Our fans will watch our stuff. But if we want to bring in new people, we have to trick them into watching the video want to give them good people. content. I don't They think they're smart. Well, they're I not. do because I want to fucking survive <laughs> How are you on this get shit. More patrons, if you don't bring yeah. in new people, I retards. will exactly. kill all the people. <laughs> I hate them. I mean, hippo. They're stupid. What do you think of my titles, hippo? Uh, I can't remember. Give me a title you have. Uh, how I Learned to Stop Worrying and, dr- and Skip Akashic Records. Mm. Or, uh... Well, that one's funny. That one's got, like, a... Well, yeah, name. that one's a reference, yeah. so... Uh, and a very well-known reference. What's the one I did on Kemono Friends? The Lucid Dream World of right. Kemono Friends. I don't know. What do you uh, think of that? I mean, Hippo, what book That's are you okay. more likely to read? Uh, satire about women or men are better than women? Like, do you want the honest title yeah. or the cool yeah. title? I want the cool one. I'm. T- I'm, yeah. s- I'm, t- I'm. What I'm saying. I is I think you're talking about something more specific than what we're uh, well, saying. Sounds, you're talking. Well, yeah. what Hippo is saying is like, I, we should name everything like Avon Galleon Review Number Five. Like, why not give it no, a no, more no, creative no, title? No, 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 no. What I mean is that people, they, I've just seen just recently. There's like every single type of video in that in that of that ilk mm-hmm. seems to be under the assumption that you already know the basics and you're looking for some extra shit yeah. and I will never click on anything that implies I, that I know what I what I you know I, get I know what this you mean. thing like nerd writer videos every title is trying to play into your desire to be smart right like yeah, he, sure. he's constantly trying to reassure you that by watching his video you are gaining an arcane knowledge that will make you stronger hmm. or, or give you a deeper appreciation for this cultural touchstone that everybody already understands it'll give you that nerd cred that is so valuable Valuable in today's I, social economy. Oh my! Like I would much rather just re- watch a a straight review of something that everybody has seen, but I haven't. Oh, no, like, no like gay say, reviews for you, huh? Yeah, you bigot well, piece let's of shit. Let's say like Seinfeld, right? Mm-hmm. I have never seen like a normal straight review of Seinfeld, mm-hmm. uh, but I have seen plenty of annoying like extra videos about the right. subtext and the extra things that you 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 know Seinfeld everyone knows Seinfeld here's some more i will never you know what that reminds me of never enjoy that, <laughs> that sort of reminds stuff. me of people complaining about things that everyone's talking about on the internet that i haven't heard like you know my introduction to ludo narrative dissonance was movie was the game overthinker episode called stop talking to me about ludo narrative dissonance and my second exposure to it was um Someone else being like, "Oh God, oh yeah, it was it was Jim Quisition talking about Ludo Skabib disco biscuits." Like, oh geez, so much Ludo narrative dissonance out there. Since everyone just spends all their day yeah. reading blog posts by shitty blog artists like me, Jim Quisition. I'm like, no, I don't. That's how all You're the only person I listen to that complains me. about this. But, but if we, if yeah, we can't have an intro where we tell people the basics and we also like can't assume everybody knows everything, what are we supposed to do? Well, it, well I'm it, not talking about intros. I'm talking about entire well, videos. It, it, like if somebody intros are part explain. of entire videos, hippo. This is what we need to no, fucking we'll do. What's your point? Show I don't get for. it. We have a German shepherd talking like about German expressionism. Monkeys, we have a fucking monkeys looking. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. What? 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 what, what, what well, the have problem here is we're. we're ever, Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm dead. No. Oh, we, are, no. we are simultaneously trying to say that you should, uh, yeah, yeah. like, not just do summary, but that you should also, and Hippo wants, like, standard reviews, but what mm. Hippo means is that he wants there to be videos that are just a actual review of the thing mm. without assuming that everyone's already seen it. It's, it's like, it really, all it is, is that it's the, the flowery and the, the, the insinuation mm-hmm, of the yeah. title that makes me not want to click on it. Like if you if 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 you are yeah. talking about say the content of the video is exactly the same if you mm-hmm. just title it Seinfeld analysis then I'm gonna click on it because I want to know. But I think yeah. most people wouldn't click on that. I, we, it's yeah, such a you gotta play the game. Title. Well, mm-hmm. I hate YouTube. Then. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, there is yeah. well, I mean, I think, I think I Hippo would click that title. Yeah. I think Hippo would click on it if you said like, "Why is Seinfeld so well loved?" You know, if that was the title, you'd probably click on that because that's what you're trying to find out. Well, maybe not at this point because I just, I just generally hate titles. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm we done need to with titles. against video titles. They gotta go. They gotta go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> First your, uh, your, your, your channel titles. banner. Your channel banner for hypocrite should just be the words "I'm gonna kill you," <laughs> <laughs> so everyone knows. <laughs> You know, you are the hypocrite, so it's entirely appropriate that you make YouTube videos about how much YouTube sucks and is a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's good. Yeah. Well, uh, all right. How about we go to the questions now, team? I'm down. Let's let's yep. do it. Let's do it. Here we go. Hippo, I love you. 
Okay, I feel was... no ill will towards anyone. I am just I don't like YouTube anymore. I don't like titles. I don't like I don't like I don't I do, like seeing I do. titles. I don't like seeing titles and reading them and having to decide on whether or not I hate it. I mean, I do legitimately. Why would you want to watch a review of a show you like? Like, why would you want to watch a Seinfeld review if you know nothing about it anyway? Couldn't you just read a summary to see if you'd be into well, it? Well, because Gibbs heard a lot about Seinfeld over the years, so well, then you just know, fucking relevant. watch it. Well, I can't. That's hard. I don't have a television. <laughs> I don't know. I think if an analysis is good and interesting, you'll just sort of inadvertently get all the shit and eventually know all the obvious stuff. I'm not really. I'm not really looking for a Seinfeld analysis. I'm just. I just don't like people being <laughs> mm-hmm. smart. I don't like people having smart titles. That's really my entire point. If you're trying to okay. be smart, I hate you in it forever. Like after watching like a combined total of like fifteen thousand hours of Roger Vanderweed analyzing Sonic, I already. I now know all the basic stuff without him ever actually attempting to explain basic stuff, just through inference. Mm-hmm. So, you okay, know. Okay, here, here we go, people. Question, question number one. Read this question, Nate. Here I go. Okay, at our old friend IceKiller159 asks, uh, Yo, PCP, you get to experience a piece of media for the first time again. What do you choose? Oh, I am shit. torn between Ace Attorney and Good Death question. Grips. Oh, man. Yeah. Way to go, hmm. Elton. Oh, 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 definitely <laughs> lost. That's my answer. I already know it. Lost, huh? Even with the ending. Oh yeah. That's that we know is bad. Especially that we know with the ending. Bad. It's not a bad. <laughs> Anyone who says the ending of Lost is bad. You know what? This is this is my oh, communist glasses are not fucking orange. Anyone who says the ending of Lost is bad, I'll fucking find you and I'll kill your whole family. Jesse, I think you are as passionate about yes. every opinion you actually end up caring about as much as Nate is about the glasses thing. Like, I think for you, it's like ninety nine percent of opinions you immediately discard because you know that if you let your opinion sit there for more than five seconds, it's going to become, like, a, a, a hill to die on. <laughs> I'm, I'm passionate about all of my opinions equally until I remember how I feel about Lost, and then I'm passionate about <laughs> nothing but Lost. <laughs> if I could... I, re- I would actually... Oh, sorry, Hippo, go ahead. Uh, no, you go. Okay, if I could experience something for the first time again, it would have to be the final three episodes of season four of Breaking Bad. I don't think anything okay. has enthralled me as a viewer what, uh, more than what, what part was that, that was happening? So the first of the three is the Crawl Space mm-hmm. episode, which is a very famous ending. Where he laughs at the end and goes yeah, mad. Yeah, right? just, yeah, yeah. God damn, I, that, that was the bingiest binge watch I've ever binged, I'll tell you. <laughs> and that was the cringiest cringe watch I've ever cringed. Oh! oh. Your show sucks. Oh. <laughs> um, for my answer for this, like... What's going on? Most, I don't know. uh... I don't know, somebody's typing up a over fucking there. storm. Um... <laughs> The like with most movies and TV shows, I tend to like it more the more times I see it. So like most of those, I feel like I I wouldn't want to hear or see for the first time. But like any album that I like, for me like the most magical time with an album is when I'm first getting into it and it feels mysterious and like I can't tell the difference between all the songs yet, Mm -hmm. and it's just like. Um, like, for instance, Rat King's So It Goes is a great example, where I was, like, playing this album on repeat while playing Fantasy Star Online for a few days, and it would just be like, you know, as it's going, I pick up on little things, I'm like, oh, here's that song, oh, I remember hearing this part, and, like, it just feels like this endless, magical, uh, ex- you know, exp- like, just getting to hear all these different things that I didn't know about, and then eventually, once I've heard the album enough times, and I know exactly what's where, that's where I start forming opinions, like, oh, well, this song's a little weaker than the others, mm-hmm. so I might skip that track, or like, oh, this is the good verse, this is the, you know, that part, like, oh, now, I, now I've got, like, all these opinions about it, and I don't have that sheer, just wonder of experience something I don't completely understand yet. Um, so, like, especially longer albums, like Third Side of Tape by Lil Ugly Mane, because that one's, like, two over two hours long, and it's just, like, a random compilation of weird songs that, that are, like, all completely different from one another. So it was always, like, this total mind-altering experience to listen to it until I'd heard it, like, 30 times, and now it's like, oh, okay, this is the part where the obnoxious 10-minute uh, black metal song kicks in. Let's skip that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, any album, really. Okay. Okay. What Jesse, about the you human equation? Do you want to hear the human equation again? Human equation would be yeah. That's a, that's yeah! another good example of one that in the early days was like very <laughs> I, mysterious. I believe the human equation is pussy plus my face <laughs> equals a <laughs> g- happy boy. <laughs> Did you, are we still doing a PCP episode over the human equation? It's on the list. If, it's if, on the if list. anybody else fucking listens to it, we'll and get to Boo and Nate, that, and that's all we need. 
I'll listen to it. I'll listen to it. We'll fucking make you listen to it. Did you hear over at his be. house? Force him. Tie him up, uh, Clockwork Orange style. Only pry his ears <laughs> open instead of his eyes. I'll, 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 I'll knock him out and then put it like tie him to a chair and then he'll wake up. He'll go. I can't move. I can't, <laughs> I can't feel, feel my, my body. body. <laughs> I don't remember what's happening. No, I don't That's remember anything. Says. You fucking pleb. By the way, uh, right, my, my answer to this question, anything. without a doubt, without a doubt, is is certainly One Piece. I want to take that journey again, knowing nothing. And luckily uh, for you, it's not over yeah. yet, so you still can. I, that's the great thing about it, man. You should have. You, you guys, I want to tell our audience: you have never heard someone read something more enthusiastically than Nate reads One Piece. You should have. Yeah, <laughs> like, if you've been night, here. I'm sitting in the other room and just hearing Nate go, "Oh my god, <laughs> what? <laughs> what?" Dude, everybody <laughs> should. If you don't care about being <laughs> spoiled. Go check out the new episode. Oh my god, I didn't finish the fucking video yet. I have to make it. I totally forgot. Yeah, uh, make that shit. Okay, I'll, I'll make it today. Um, go check out the new episode. It'll be up like last week at this point of uh, the podcast. And like the things that happened to this chapter really were yet again the most insane, <laughs> mind blowing things of all time. Uh, it really it scared nuts. me. This I was, was terrified. actually terrifying and like beyond. It was a new fucking <laughs> I'm a, level. I, I'm, uh, I'm glad to find out that I'm not the only like the on, the only loud reader. Who, who yeah. passionately? I scream. I yell. I run. like like when I like when I re- when I read comics. I like mm-hmm. I do all the voices out loud, and I like pace around the room doing my Kevin Conroy voice and my mm-hmm. fucking Joker voice. And like <laughs> if anyone if anyone else is in the house and I don't know about it and they hear me, I have to run out of the house screaming and never come yeah, back. If you if you if you, if you read a comic quietly, everything goes according to plan. There's no problem. But but you read a comic <laughs> and you get a little loud, everyone loses their mind. <laughs> That's if it. I read a comic <laughs> quietly, then it's not really happening. It's just a fake made up uh, little book for kids. Yeah. If I read it out loud and the characters are really here. Then it's real. Then it's real. <laughs> Hippo, did you have an answer for this? I, I do. Um, being a, a many years veteran of uh-huh. World of Warcraft, oh. um, I'm very I'm very disillusioned with it. I'm very like tired of, of the whole... What, what happens with World of Warcraft, the reason it grips so many people mm-hmm. is because the initial experience of seeing how big the world is yeah. and all the places yeah. there are is absolutely fucking magical. It's the best part of And you fall in love with it and, and you just, you yeah. want to live there. You want to go, you want to do everything. And I have, I've done literally everything in that game aside mm-hmm. from the current expansion. Mm-hmm. And to the point where it, nothing excites me anymore. And it really, it really is sad because it's like so much... So so cool. That's it's a the, my, fucking. That's a great yeah. answer, and I feel that way about every MMO I've played. Sure. Like sure. With, with with WoW, it was specifically just the undead starting country because playing through that was fucking magical. And then I got to the next area, which was like the Badlands, and thought it was lame. So I just restarted and played through the the starting yeah. undead place like three times, and just and, until I completely knew it. And then it was not as interesting. Hey. But same goes for like Terra or Black Desert, like any of those games when you first started. It's just like whoa. Oh, this this world is so huge. Hey, man, and, oh, the, the so trolls, the troll starting area was great, man. I love that fucking place. <laughs> fucking trolls are the best race. Everyone else is shit and wow. Only Devu? trolls are good. <laughs> you have a, you have an answer, Devu? Did you? Yes, yeah, actually. So I was thinking about it. Everything that I liked at one point, then overconsumed. I don't want to regress to a point of not having ever experienced it because it was instrumental in my understanding of what makes things good and you know mm-hmm, I use sure. it as an influence. So I don't want to fuck with the timeline that badly. Sure. So, oh my right. god, you're right, Davu, because <laughs> if I went back in time to when I hadn't seen Lost, I might listen to people who say the ending is bad. Exactly. Oh, no, you gotta watch it. Oh no! <laughs> well, that's exactly what I want. There's this stupid dumbass show called The Pretender, which is sort of like a proto, like like hour-long weekly American drama type of thing that like Alias and Lost sort of followed up on. Mm. And it's like mm. a late 90s thing. It has a lot of weird superficial similarities with Alias, actually. And uh, it has an interesting sort of character premise, but it is the Ranma one half of America because it just it doesn't uh. progress anything ever. And it's four seasons long. And I just watched it because I was watching it with my family. Huge waste of fucking time. So if I... It did not... Ex- like, you know, there's other shows that like I didn't like and like I regret watching, but I don't regret watching because it was it's like fun and I think it's interesting how they fuck up. But Pretender is just mediocre and stupid and it was just the one time in my life where for whatever reason I was willing to waste that much time and, and not expand my knowledge of anything ever for any reason whatsoever. So if I can erase my viewing from history and then have to begin watching it again, my current self will have no tolerance for it and turn it off immediately and I'll have saved myself like a combined total of like 50 hours. That's a great answer. <laughs> so you do it all for those 50 hours. <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah. All right. Use all of it on D. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know what he means, Nate. The, yeah. The D board. <laughs> okay, so that's everybody, right? We've all okay. gone through this. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah, let's. Yeah, I've got yes. here's here's another question that I absolutely love. Uh, okay, here we go. So this is at uh, Pawn Didator asks, at PCP, who is the hottest Sailor Scout? I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. I don't Mars, know them well enough. you don't know them well enough. It's absolutely Easily Mars. Mars. It's hundred percent Mars. Not even, it's not even no a contest. Doubt. It's not no even a doubt. Contest. Wait, is Mars the black-haired one? The sailor man. <laughs> Mars, <laughs> Mars is the black-haired. I thought he was yeah, the coolest the guy hottest. you've ever seen. The only male one. Uh, oh, that's yeah. also yeah, that's obvious. Okay, you're right. But aside from that guy, <laughs> aside from the coolest guy, definitely. Said, I'm looking at a I'm looking at a, a pop vinyl Sailor Mars right now. Yeah, on yeah. My Nate, Nate's got a picture of all of them lined up next to each other, and Mars is like far and away the hottest. The one. only other one that I like, uh, I, I mean, I I do appreciate Jupiter, but Mars is by far the the best one. I never seen Sailor Moon. Now I'm just kidding. The hottest one is Homura. I don't know who that is. Can I from can I fuck Magica, a cat? Oh, fucking is that right. is that is that cat like like the cat from Sabrina the Teenage it's Witch? It's the same can cat. I, yes, that's the same 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 literally the same thing. Cool. I like, I like that uh, cat. I will fuck that cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I still like Captain Crunch, and I'll stand by that. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Um, uh, at Soli Claw asks, if gay was a physical object, musical genre, or food, what would it be? Two balls touching. Gay? If gay, if gay, I'm not, I was gonna say Digi. It would okay. be Digi. Is the my first choice. Well, if gay was a food, it would definitely. Be Wait, that got cut off. Say that again. What my? Your audio cut my off for a second there. My my, my brilliant corn dog joke. Oh, corn dog! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> oh my God! Uh, you guys weren't laughing. I thought I thought it wasn't funny. <laughs> no, I just didn't hear you. Oh my God! I was just a like I just like threw my fucking corn dog joke out there and just like dead silence. Like no, <laughs> it, it finally happened. <laughs> yep, it's over for you, dude. Time to walk into the into the into the snow and die. <laughs> Anyone have any other suggestions for what gay would be? Um, what, 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 did he say genre of music? Yeah, that was one. Uh, whichever one sucks. <laughs> A dad Dick. rock. Get it? Um, hmm. oh, that, I'm so like happy. Glam rock, happy, maybe, happy but I don't know. Me. Yeah, tiny Tim. It would I be tiny Tim. You. It's never every bother day. me. Okay, let's move on with this question. This is dead air. Uh, let's. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, at, our hero, Monkey Away, asks a very apropos question. What's stopping the other PCB members from doing their own Mia Mafava? But then he asks, I don't know if this is supposed to be an insult. He says, standards or work ethic? Like, no one else has low enough standards? Or they don't have low enough work ethic to make a I came up with high enough work ethic. It's got to be the opposite. I came up with I mean, one concept where I do a video every day all year called... Right. Two zero one eight. Too cool. Zero fucks given. One video a day. You're going to hate all of them. <laughs> Which is pretty great. I do like that um, a lot. I did fucking me a math for three years ago, you asshole. But you didn't brand it hard enough. No, I didn't brand it at all. Because he didn't, didn't brand it at all. Know. It was a secret. It was a secret because yeah. he had money um, on the line as to whether or not he would succeed. And if he yeah, failed, I a lot he would have ran away with the money. <laughs> yeah. Nate, you had to pay me for that, I, right? You bet against me, and I think you gave me ten bucks or I, something. I, I don't think I actually was in on that bet. I would have bet against you if I had known, but I don't no, think you I were. actually did. You were in on the bet. I don't know if you ever paid out, but you were in on it. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I know you were. Because Ben Ben was the only one in the PCP who wouldn't bet against me, because he he said huh. he wanted to bet for me, and I was like, you can't do that. Well, then I will give you ten dollars. I think you might have. It's possible you I, I really what don't remember being involved at all, but I'll, I'll trust you. Here's my theory. I said, that, okay, <laughs> well, what we're talking about is in 2014, I made right. a video every day in October, mm -hmm. and I made bets with, like, everyone I knew, like, to see if, like, you know, to incentivize me to do it. Right. Um, mostly it was my mom and dad who, mm -hmm. like, were betting the most, and, 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 had, and they're the only ones who I, like, really hammered to pay me, but, mm -hmm. like... Uh, yeah, I made bets with, like, everybody, but I didn't, like, announce that I was doing it because I was scared if I did, it wouldn't get completed, right. as tends to be the case when I announce projects. So it was only, like, at the very end of the month that I acknowledged that I had just done this thing, um, whereas hmm. Nate, like, made it very clear See, what I'm was the opposite, all because the you'll get bored. If I announce it, then I have to do it, or, or right, else I exactly. won't. Yeah. So the well, opposites. speaking of that, mm -hmm. I had an idea of doing a July Mia Mathava. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know whether I should. Just well, I mean, in the meantime, there. you've got your. Uh, <laughs> I, I got your an June. No, like, it's Demon Dark Blood Month, bro. Which it's is not great. really the same, but it's it's good. It's similar. It's, it's, I like it. It's more I like than I mean, one. It's more than zero I'll, videos. I want to say, which is for, what I usually for the yeah. record, all of us are insanely prolific in the kind of way of Mia Mafava. Like Gibbon has had months where he puts out videos like almost every day on Give and Take. Mm -hmm. Jesse's had months where he's put out a video almost every day just on random channels, and I do literally put out a video every day yeah. uh like, hey, there's a in, the era innately. of Furnace Room has no breaks. There's been a video every single That's day. True. That's in addition to Ponycast. It's mm -hmm, in addition to mm -hmm. other videos on other channels. I also I did do a video every day in October of 2013, and I'm still bearing the emotional That's scars right. from it. To Most this of day. those are hidden now, but that that was <laughs> right. The thing. Right. I uh, I had an idea to like do like next year do like Mia Mafava <laughs> two. Maybe I'll actually make a video, but like the joke would be that I don't make a video, and like I said, maybe. Right, you said yeah. maybe. <laughs> well, well now you said that. it. Uh, yeah, you know, no, only a select few. No, I will said know it, this. so I don't actually have to do it. Great. <laughs> Even that would have been too much work for me. I'll just say it here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's I think see for here. me, it's a simple of matter of like crop rotation. We're like going out into the world and watching movies and like being a real person to like form actual opinions is like planting mm -hmm. cotton and then oh, yeah. making a video explaining your shit that... is like planting corn and i think like someone like mr b tongue right spent like 30 years just being a normal guy probably writing a lot of college papers or some shit but never mm -hmm. airing out any of his thoughts and then over the course of a couple of years he just drops absolute gold and then he runs out and he only comes back once a year to like have another little bit of corn yeah so for me i'm just kind of that's why that's really why i don't have any problem with not making any videos i'm just i'm just fucking planting cotton up my ass guys and it's gonna all shit out one day <laughs> and then do incredible well, rainbow i all think right? i think everyone needs to understand about mia mafava is that 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 thing wouldn't have been possible if not for the fact that nate had not been doing that for the last two years mm -hmm. because 30 ideas in a row is a hell of a lot because our, our work is all based on other stuff. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like Casey Neistat where he just goes out and literally films his day every day and half the videos are the exact same. Like, he goes to the right. airport, he flies to another country, he goes somewhere. Like, we have to, every single time, have something new to talk about. And it's one thing, if you go two years making one video every two months, you've got this huge stockade of shit you've been planning to talk about that you've never gotten around to, mm -hmm. and then just, boom, blow through a bunch of it in a month. But if Nate tried to do Mia Mafava again right afterwards, then suddenly it's going to be, oh shit, I'm out of ideas. Well, you know, that's, yeah. that's absolutely true. I, I, there were plenty that's of ideas. That's what happened to me in that October, that, is that I, I fucking completely, like at the end of the month, you'll mm -hmm. see the last like five videos are just like really struggling to come up with something. I do have a, a bunch of ideas that I you know was just stockpiling to, as potential stuff, but I picked the ones that I thought were the best. But right. but more so than that, what what is interesting to me about Mia Mafava that, that makes it sort of special, I guess, is that it really was very time-bounded and like a one time thing and it, right. it, it was an event like I to, to do it even to do it for a year I really think people would get bored even right. if I was delivering content you know better than ever and just doing that same shit I don't think people would give a fuck after a while which yeah. is for you know variety people are into variety they want to feel like something special is happening everyone was so hyped to be involved with this thing that was going on during this time and it was it was very effective but to do it to like to immediately do like the same sort of thing, even like two months later, they'd be like, oh, yeah. y y like we got you'd see the cheers, but they'd be like, yeah, a little quieter. And then like yeah. maybe a month later, it's like, yeah, okay, we're doing this again. All right, same yeah. shit. So um, I don't know, like yeah, yeah. That that's the only reason I'm not sure about doing a July one. Uh, I mean, it's not gonna have the same hype. There's gonna be a few people mm -hmm. that'll be like, oh, you're doing one now, that's cool, but really. You know, I don't really want it to be... I don't really care well, too much about it being, like, a big, like, oh, yeah, branding, and, and everyone buys... Uh, I'm all about that branding. ...buys shirts, uh, mostly because I, I can't be bothered to, to think about that. Right. I just want to make... I, I just want to get into the habit of being able oh, to make... You gotta get 31 bothered. videos in a month. Oh, mm. I think it's... Like, that, uh, that skill is something that I, I need. Yeah, mm. and mm. I think it's important for everybody to realize that, like, all of that branding and stuff is... It's not just that that's a good like marketing decision. It's that that's what allowed Nate to do that. That's like he right. couldn't have done it if he didn't make it a big deal. It had right. to have lots of pressure. It had to be like a lot of personal responsibility on the line. Personally, for me, that wouldn't have worked on me. But mm -hmm. having money on the line worked right. because I am a fucking Jew and I will not like the idea that I was gonna have to pay out a hundred and ten dollars because that's about how much 
how many bets I made. Yeah. Um, the idea of having to pay $110 because I failed to make a video every day was completely unacceptable. You know what's funny? You know? I don't know if I mentioned this in the interview yesterday, but like I had actually been planning on one of the things that was going to make as part of me a math vote was a deal with the audience where if I don't succeed at making all this, I will like give the money away that I make during this <laughs> month to like Holy whatever. Like we'll, we'll have like a pull. Like I was really considering that, but then I just thought, you know what? Like, that is unnecessary. I don't yeah. think people actually well, require that. The problem that. with that is it would people would start holding you to like, oh, it has to be midnight. Yeah, like then know? it would have been weird standards for yeah. stuff. Whereas, yeah, this was better. But yeah, that was that was tossed around. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I I guess there, there's a place for me a map of us in the world. But uh, I don't know. Like I would love a give me a map of some kind. I would love like I, what I want from Gib, and that's what me a map was was an excuse for you to just make tons of content fast i want to know what you're thinking i want to see you I'll, do goofy what shit. what i want from gibbon is just in in uh the same thing that i was inspired of mm. with by me a which is a middle ground yeah between like the absolute like i made this in 10 seconds but it is fucking great mm -hmm. that is give and take and the like this took a whole month that is hypocrite <laughs> like i want that yeah I mean, essentially what minuscule reviews are but like without pigeonholing in it into being called a minuscule review you mm -hmm. know yeah so there you Hopefully. go. There's your answer, I guess. Next question. Let's see here. How deep in are we? We are one hour and forty nine minutes. Okay. Let's we'll do a couple more of these and then we'll we'll wrap this shit up. Uh, da, da, da. okay. How do we how do we got here? Oh, at oh at rain snow hail. Hey, what's up, dude? Asks uh, which member slash friend of the PCP, if not already doing a podcast together, would you like to at least try to co-host a show with? Co-hosting shows. People outside the PCP. Outside the PCP? or uh, Isn't that what they said? What member friend? Friend. Well, oh, slash member. PCP. Uh, so, okay, so it'd be I, I, think he, I got like, the impression he means, like, which other PCP member do we want to have an individual show with? Right. right. So, like, who do you want well, to do things with that you're not already doing something with? Digi, mm -hmm. Digi has been saying that me and him should do something, but we have no, I, yeah. no real concrete idea of what mm -hmm. exactly concrete yeah. reviews review concrete there you go <laughs> yeah i've already got shows with i've got a show with monkey and a show with nate and hippo's mm -hmm. the last one who i also want to show with but yeah it would have to be the right show like mm -hmm. um everybody else i love working with but like for a weekly show uh most of these motherfuckers are horribly unreliable so <laughs> <laughs> Like like Ben, I, who was know, actually signed up for this episode, and he did not here. show up. Just so, did not yeah, show there's up. There's a reason go, I ben. haven't started a weekly show with Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the reason why I'm on so few episodes of this show is I'm really good at talking myself down from thinking that I'm gonna have much to say that will be useful and like. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. mm -hmm. The only thing that really motivates me to like to do podcasting is if there is a ridiculously unnecessarily elaborate plan like which is why i'm so yeah. into doing commentaries with digi where the idea is that we commentary every single main video and we say literally whatever we want that right. is what gives it the challenge that entices me so i feel like if yeah. i was to do a podcast it would have to have a lofty ridiculous plan like finding the best like a problem narrative of some whatever. kind yeah some sort of weird gimmick Okay, fair point. And if you like Someone... shows with gimmicks, go listen to the insufferable show, social media argument, the podcast at so monkeyjones.com. So, so viewers, do I actually do want to have suggestions? You actually own monkeyjones.com? No, but I'm hoping somebody buys it and just makes it porn or something. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> give suggestions for some overly ambitious podcast concept that I could possibly be skilled in in some way. Hit me up with that. We, yeah. had, we had teased the idea between ourselves of doing some sort of, like, debate or, like, idea discussion thing. So maybe at some point we'll do something I like that. I think me and Nate nope. are going to end up with, like, a bunch of podcasts together. Yeah, we, have we got a couple for, on, the, on the back. Like, Aeromango's right? been going really well. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about doing... I don't know if we should talk about Let's keep it on the plans. download. Yeah, some other projects. We have, like, works. several and other podcasts. That is podcasts such a brilliant ideas. idea that yeah. I think it's one of the best I've ever had. So I hope that it, we, we get it going yeah. at some point. Um... Yeah. Super secret. <laughs> so it's, it is That's super, all we're super gonna secret. Say. But let's um real quick. Why don't we just talk about just let's just name the ones that exist already, just to run through them real quick. Yeah. So there's the PCP, of course. There's the Pod D cast with me and Gib, which is the One yeah. Piece Weekly. There is the Pony cast, which is Jesse and Gib. Uh, you know, My Little Pony every week. Uh, what, what am I missing? Oh, there's insufferable social media between Monkey and Digi. Aramanga Sensei. Aramanga Sensei. Digi and Nate. 
And the Naru cast. Don't forget the Naru the cast, cast with Mage and Monkey. And and Monkey the, We're the working on episode two. Hell wow. yeah. Um, there's Rowdy Fuckers Cop Killers, which is Munchie and Munchie ben. and Ben. Yeah. There's the uh, uh, Stealing Your Dads as If It Was Easy, which is me and Munchie. Yep, yep. There's... Uh, um, there's the the commentaries that me and Davu do, which is right. once a month. There's the Homestuck um, thing that Munchie's doing on his channel yeah. now. Though that's he none has, of like, us are really. He was on there, but yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's mostly his thing. There's uh, um, Sai tries to get Monkey into because Sai's an well, honorary Sai PCC yeah. member. Definitely not honorary, a honorary PCC member, member, Sai. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys all agree like he's an honorary member. <laughs> And uh, he's he's what, he's part of the uh, the like the the sub PCP. I I, sure. I have in my head that there's like like there's there's a secret ten person like PCP. Uh, well, no, that it's they, like they, the they dark need to... PCP. It's the dark PCP. We, yeah, it's, it's, it's like <laughs> we, we talk it's about like Lachlan Atlanta, right? still Psy, uh -huh. uh, um, uh Who else would be in our Nino? In the, the Nega? Nino. Yeah, Nino. Know. The Nega PC. Well, uh, don't call him a Nega. Jump That's team always would be. No, no, no. Did you? We talked yeah, about jump. this in Atlanta. That like it's a fighting game and it's the PCP and then there's all the, like the assist. Oh yeah, they're the or color the summons, swaps. Right. The color swaps. Or, or yeah, right. the summons. Yeah. Oh, the summons. So, like, yeah, so okay. Psy is an alternate skin for Digi. And like yeah. Nino, oh, okay. is a, it, Nino is an alternate skin for Nate, which or is not an insult you know? like, anymore because Psy has lost a lot of weight and probably weighs less than I do now. So sure, it's, yeah. it's no, no, it's an insult on you, Digi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're insulting you, Digi, to compare no, you no, to Psy. I'm, I'm saying that it's not an insult to me because Psy is no longer fat. Psy is it's even more skinnier of a personality than I thing. Wait, <laughs> no, I, you know what? it's not insulting. It's perfectly politically correct. I, I, wait, all I, I care I, is I that I'm perfect. not compared to a fat guy. That's the only uh, thing that matters that's, to that's, me. <laughs> okay, yeah, what I've, is I've it? Got, I've got the perfect, the perfect podcast that needs to exist. Mm -hmm. uh, Munchie and Jeff. Some, something yes. with them. Something Munchie with Munchie and, and Jeff. That would just be Jeff hilarious. being overwhelmed Munchie by Munchie. would destroy Munchie. his mind. <laughs> yes, break that exactly. Boy. Exactly. Man, did you? I just thought, wouldn't it be great in an alternate timeline where your friend Brandon Tolentino kept doing podcasts with you and he was actually known by your current fans? Because then he could be an alternate skin for Hippo and the only one I could think of. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah that's I true. was actually wondering who'd be the alt skin for Hippo, but... Um, uh, well... I think Davu and uh, and Lachlan is... Skill and Lachlan Still would be uh, Monkey and, swaps. and oh, I mean, Monkey I would be right. a main character as well. Mm -hmm. But how oh, isn't Lachlan tall? I don't fucking know. I don't. I, I, how are we doing this re this relationship? <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, here's our what, final. What even topic are we on right now? Okay, We're still well, talking that, about podcasts. Was, sharing I forget, podcasts. I forget what question that was. <laughs> uh, doesn't matter. Here's our last question for the day. Okay, Benjamin Whistle at Benjamin Whistle asks, "What do y'all <laughs> think of cars?" What do you think of cars? cars? But I cars. wish I wasn't they... bored by them. And whenever, because like there was a moment where I was thinking about how there's like this subset of people who are just like, oh yeah, that's a '95 Honda Civ bitch, something or other. And I'm just like, man, you know, whenever I'm watching a show and there's a video game console and I and my eyes light up and I'm like, ooh, what video game console is that? And I can tell based on any subtle visual cues. And I'm like, man, people who are like that with cars get to be like that all day outside yeah. <laughs> i'm like that's ridiculous how could you possibly so deal with that much stimulation of intrigue also I what kind of weirdo are you to like cars what else do you like pavement do you like unicycles <laughs> just, just I bet they have a concrete podcast boring yeah <laughs> i uh i have what i call car dyslexia hmm. any two cars that look anything alike i cannot tell them apart um, which makes it difficult to find my own car because my I guess the the design of my car is very popular in like modern cars so they all look like mine sure it's very very confusing but you got the beeper the beep boop right that thing you don't have that problem when you only ever drive three hundred dollar cars from the fucking seventies yeah <laughs> yeah but <laughs> like good old and lit G <laughs> but uh Jeep Wrangler I, I mean I can't uh, like I can't differentiate enough between cars to give a fuck about them but yeah. like there was a period where because my dad runs a dealership he also doesn't give a fuck about cars he just is good at selling them mm -hmm. but he hired a bunch of my friends and it's like, like you and somehow somehow them hmm. starting to work with cars made them suddenly like all about cars like all they talk about They're is cars and world, shit sure. mm -hmm. it was really really strange like to see a bunch of like like otaku guys suddenly yeah. become like these huge car otaku and like fucking always like buying forza games and like listening to initial d mega Weird. mixes and shit like well, the initial d thing is cool <laughs> yeah like they just got way into cars and they would like talk about it all day and i'm like how can you even tell the difference between these fucking things my dad is sort of obsessed with cars um you know he's always he's usually getting like a new one and like he's like he'll always have like a nice car 
um, at our house. So he'll like be he'll sell the old nice one. He'll buy a new nice one. He wants a constant rotation. It's like what brings him the most joy in life. So that's great. Yeah. And like after he retires, he's thinking of like working in a, with a dealership in some way, becoming like an amateur salesman just to make a little money. Um, but like he he tells me these stories of, like when he was a little boy. I believe it was he would sit with his grandpa like on uh, like the edge of the road. They would watch cars come by, and like the grandpa would quiz him like based on the headlight shape of the cars. It'd be like, what car is that? And it was a game to see how quickly my dad could tell exactly what like model make year was the fucking car that was coming. And at some point, he just completely fell in love with cars and is just super see, what, obsessed. What pisses me off is mm-hmm. that you can be that, mm. and people think that's like relatively normal. Yeah, they do. S- same with sports. Like, like mm-hmm. you can you can know this like insane autistic level of shit about cars and people are just like hey it's just a car those guy just, if just you know that shit about anime topics. it's like oh i bet that guy's never gotten laid those, you know yeah, like those are the socially well, approved topics I mean, for whatever yeah, reason that's true though yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> putting that aside well, that, I, well that's uh, the re- it's think... a self-perpetuating prophecy like the people who, yeah. are, who are like that with anime they think of themselves as guys who mm-hmm. Oh, I'm into something weird, you know. Whereas well, guys who are into cars needs, don't have to think that, you know. Everybody needs somebody who knows how to fix a car. You don't need somebody who knows what fucking I'm not chaos about, is. I'm not talking yeah. about people who know how to fix a car. I'm talking about people who who just memorize car shit. Yeah, because like my they dad's not really cool. much of a mechanic yeah. or anything. He's mostly just an appreciator of how <laughs> yeah. cars look and shit. Most yeah. car people don't know the first fucking thing, and they all think they do, but they don't know how to fix a fucking car. You know. I'm a car yeah. person. I've been this whole time. It's a secret. Yeah. It's a the, the most well guarded secret tell me, of tell all me, time. Tell me three things about a car that are true. <laughs> tell me three. You yes, can't do yes, it. Guy who you made can't the, do it. Uh, famous creator of the well, video Fuck Cars. Yeah. Uh, car person, Endless Jess. <laughs> well, Nate. Uh huh. I Shoot. lied just now. <laughs> <laughs> I lied three times. It's I lied. I lied. I lied. Tell. It's about <laughs> it's about what we wish we knew. That's how you get farther <laughs> in life. That's how you yes. progress as a person. I love cars. I'll- I I think they're cool. I I I deeply envy people who understand them and know about them. I like. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I watch mm-hmm. like regular car reviews on YouTube. I watch Top Gear sometimes. That I like, guy's a fucking. I, I, up. I look at car like I look at cars that are for sale all the time and fantasize about being able to buy all the cars. If I had a million dollars, I'd be the guy who just like goes bankrupt buying like twenty cars. You know, uh-huh. <laughs> my my dream in life, my ultimate goal in life, is to someday own the blue Viper that I owned in Gran Turismo Three when I was a kid, and that's what I've been working Ooh. towards my whole life. That goddamn Gran Turismo Three car, a, I want it. I thought you wanted a Jeep Wrangler. The Jeep Wrangler is but a stepping stone on my <laughs> path to glory. Did you? <laughs> Add that to the wiki, folks. That's canon lore. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, there you well, go. I like the Aztec up. that he what? drove in Breaking Bad. <laughs> you can do that. That's an achievable I, dream. Yeah. I think Cars is a terrible movie. This, and yeah. I should watch it. <laughs> I think that Cars 3 it's is a step the in the right direction after the, the Ca- terrible Cars, Cars 2. Cars 2 is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. I don't like it. I... Um, Toy Story 3 was better. Incidentally, Jesse mentioned regular car reviews. That guy's, like, to me, like, the Aesop Rock of YouTube. Like, a guy who's, like, so high level that I can't even completely comprehend it. Mm. And I think that might... I don't know. I've never subscribed to him. I've only seen a couple of his videos. But he's, like, the most legitimate, like... He like he writes like a real classic journalist, like yeah, writing YouTube analysis <laughs> videos. It's like his stuff like makes me feel weak. It makes me feel like I'm not doing enough. <laughs> like like I am not a good enough writer if this guy is out there. Or you know? a good enough man because I yeah. don't have enough cars. Exactly. <laughs> cars are cool. I need to get my I need to get my oil change. Cars. Oh, should we describe what car cars. we drive? Maybe no. sure. the audience give uh, a shit. I drive a, I drive a Honda Odyssey, a gold yeah. Honda Odyssey. There Nate you go. Nate drives an ancient minivan. piece of shit bus. Yeah, and, it's a minivan. Uh, <laughs> I drive a 2015 BMW X1. Um, yeah. You're just yeah. helping people out when they're on the quest to rob you because all your shit's in your car, did you? Nothing's in my car. I bring it all in everywhere it's I go. It's true. It's true. We got it protected. Uh, did nobody hear my th- my car. I heard, yeah, I heard I, oh, you. I just got why you were playing that. I was just confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nuts and bolts. I thought. I thought <laughs> yeah. 
I thought nobody cars! heard it. It's very strange. Cars! <laughs> remember when John Chan was funny? I remember. Have I we remember. not had a remember when John Chan was funny podcast We should yet? do that. that We've be definitely soon. had more than enough John Tron <laughs> complaining material. I guess that's on true. This podcast I guess that's true. And others. Has anyone watched yeah, it like Oh, wait, he's like on hiatus now. Now that like he's... Certain, like, we have certain uh -huh. like meta podcasts that have that have like slowly pieced themselves together inadvertently yeah. through like the so, fuck movie Bobcast. That's like five yeah. hours long, but it's never been made intentionally. If, yeah. if you're if you're a PCP fan who wants an excuse to listen back to every episode and find something creative to do with it, uh, snip together yeah. every time we've talked about John Tron or Movie Bob or like anyone else we bring up all the time oh, and just idea. make that a podcast. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. Also, string together all the times that me and Digi privately in the car talked about Movie Bob with no microphones because it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah, it's like one of the only things like where Digi loves hours. banging on about the same points that he's made five times before with like no update. I just love he... shit talking people. Yeah, so. yeah. and it's you know, you, there's no need to hold back when you're not on fucking you know on well, the microphone. Not that I would hold back on a microphone about Movie Bob, anyways. Well, sure, but sure. Like there's just certain people who you just get like, latch onto, and it's like you just want to shit on them all the time. I know what you mean. You know? I know what you mean. And Movie Bob's a big one for especially me and Devu because we have a lot of the same problems. But just to, to shit on John right. one more time. Speaking of conciseness. I feel like there's some point to be made with his ridiculously slow upload schedule. Fuck you, Jontron. Yeah. Get your shit together. Be funny again. Hey man, it takes him like a month time. to drive to that set. So anyway, yeah. Movie Bob, guys, I want <laughs> I want people to bug to bug me as much as possible uh, to do the Game Overthinker PZP lecture because I am the uh. only one qualified to do it, and I mm -hmm. think I could. And it's the only thing I could do a lecture on. I only want to do it if enough people want me to do it, though. I'm not sure. Okay, <laughs> if you. Press, press. Just spoiler press alert: Bob. it will be just mean spirited and bitter, no matter how hard I try not to be. It's not going to be funny, like the Well, other he ones. is fat, so it's okay. Don't <laughs> yeah. worry about it. Well, are we still it? talking about the cars we drive? Uh, yeah. I have a, <laughs> I have a funny anecdote. You know, uh, -huh. uh, I got the best car, which is also the worst car. I drive around in like a, I drive around in an old blue police car from the seventies or eighties, just like Crown Blues Victoria. Brothers. Yeah. But, like, I don't have, like, insurance or, like, a license plate. Oh. <laughs> and, uh... Wait, so, what like, fuck? every... So, like, I've gotten pulled over a bunch of times, and now it's at the point where, like, all the cops recognize my car. Everyone knows oh it, because I'm God. the only guy... I'm the only guy driving around in a fucking blue police car from the 70s, so all the, So every, every, I get pulled over every day, and uh -huh. I owe... A lot of money to the courts Dude, for not having stop insurance. Stop doing that. You gotta get some fucking. Go down to the DMV. I have to get the Tim Hortons, Nate. I have to get my donut in the morning and my coffee. Stop. And I put on my get insurance. insurance. I, I mean, Jesse, I put on my shoes. My donut shit, shoes. I... Oh Jesus! You gotta stop. I bought these. I bought these new Adidas just to be my Jesse, donut shoes. You're never so gonna when have I put your on blue my donut fucking... shoes in the morning. You're... You're never gonna get your goddamn blue viper if you keep leaking money like this. You gotta get your shit together, dude. Ah, I need my morning donut! <laughs> PCP fan, also donuts. create a supercut impromptu meta PCP episode called Jesse Wood uh, Generational Poverty. <laughs> Oh my god, that's great. Okay, we're done. That's it, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for being here, everybody. Subscribe Hope you to Monkey Jones. Make sure you uh, send us more questions so we can answer them. We will answer your question if you uh, use hashtag AskPCP. So make sure you do that. Or you can at... Uh, well, no, I'm not going to tell you that because it doesn't matter. Uh, go to our Twitter, uh, at TPCrastinators. But don't send questions there. Use the hashtag. There you go, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Uh, bonus episodes if you pledge $5 to our Patreon, patreon.com slash theprocrastinators. Make sure you do all that. What was okay. the latest one? It just came out. Oh, we just did a, a bonus Remember, episode. Remember, you we get access to all the bonus episodes that have happened. All so. of them. All you gotta do is pledge one time, you get them all. And last episode was Five Nights at Freddy's versus Chuck E. Cheese. Yes. If you want to hear <laughs> the throwdown of the fucking century, Munchie lays some hot God, the only on combinations us. I've ever heard of that are worse than this is fucking epic rap battles of history. <laughs> yes, we aim for the bottom and we go even further. So thanks for this, everybody. Go pledge to our Patreon if you want to hear that shit. And uh, we will see you next week. Bye! Bye! So long. Yeah. Help! Let me out! I'm supposed to be out right now. I'm supposed to be